We are recording. Okay, welcome to the City of Boulder's Cannabis Licensing and Advisory Board meeting for the first meeting in 2023. And um, we have Caitlin admirably taking over John's spot uh, for the next three months. Is that right, Caitlin? Or That's could correct. be longer? Okay. And then we also have Sandra. How do you pronounce your last name? I should have asked you this the other day. Hi there, um, Sandra Yanis. Okay. And attorney. That, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> do you want to tell, tell who you are? Yes, absolutely. So um, hello to everybody. Uh, I know some of you from working with you in the past. It's great to see you all again. Um, so um, I am filling in um, temporarily um, for Kathy Haddock, who is unavailable. So I will be covering tonight's meeting. And thank you. All right, uh, Caitlin. Uh, I need to get the agenda up here, but I assume the next thing is reading rules of order and stuff like that. Yes, we will start with our agenda item number one, instructions for virtual meeting and rules of decorum. And I'm just gonna share my screen to show the rules of decorum. And I will read these out loud for us. All right. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive, inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found on our website, which is bouldercolorado.gov. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony should be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak only using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online. And everyone should be able to rename themselves in this meeting. Okay. Um, Do you want to go to yep. roll call? Yes. Next, we have uh, member roll call. They'll just speak your presence aloud. Uh, we have member Anderson. Present. Member Green. Present. Vice Chair Keegan. Present. Chair Kunzman. Present. Member Malo. Present. Member Noble. Present. Ex officio Thompson. Present. And then member Christie is absent and ex officio member Bailey is absent for today. Okay. Um... You all have gotten the minutes from the December 5th meeting. Does anyone have any comments or, oh, Alana, you had your hand up there. Yeah, I didn't know if this is gonna be the right time. I just couldn't open the reading packet, the PDF file. I tried saving mm -hmm. it to my computer and opening it. I was just wondering if anybody else had that problem or if I should just assume it's a my computer problem. I opened the meeting packet, no problem. I did not have problems, uh, but you can, if you go through the web page, you'd think you should be able to get in that way. Okay, thanks for reminding. I'll look that way. Caitlin, you want to post that in chat? I think that's a, a suitable re way or suitable thing we could put in chat. Everybody has the yeah. access to and the same website anyway. So that was the reading packet, remember? The reading packet. No problem. Yes, all of our packets are always online as well. Okay, uh, so next thing on, oh wait, sorry, we didn't finish. Uh, so you may or may not abstain, I guess, because uh, that's where the minutes would have been, right? Or was it in the meeting packet? I can't remember. Minutes now. are in the meeting packet. Okay, so you did see them, or should have, might have seen them. Uh, any other, any discussion or concerns? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve if someone feels moved to do that. Brian motions to approve the December meeting minutes. I'll I'll second. second. 
Oh, Stacy's stuck. Second. Okay. Uh, anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay. Um, back to the agenda. I believe the next thing is public comments. Yes. So next is agenda item two: general public comments for the board. If anyone is here in the waiting room to make public comment for the board, please use the raise hand function. You can also give me a thumbs up if that works. I see one. Let me get our three-minute timer here. I'm just going to share our timer and then I will ask you to unmute. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the club. Uh, my name is Jonathan Singer, and uh, I am now in a new role as the Senior Director of Policy and Programs for the Boulder Chamber of Commerce. Jonathan, um, many, Jonathan yep. hold on one minute. Um, Caitlin, do we not have, um, in, I know Jonathan is, is experienced at speaking in front of us, um, but do we have rules that we usually read before the public comments? Correct me if I'm wrong. Before actual public comment? Before, just like, you know, I guess you said it during the other. Yes, yeah, as long as we're following our, yeah, our the Boulder rules for appearing at public meetings, then that's fine for actual public comments. Since it's not, you know, testimony, then they just adhere to the three minutes. Okay, I apologize, Jonathan. Why don't you start again? You, you had a great start. <laughs> oh, you got you got me on such a roll now. So I'll, I'll reintroduce myself again. Uh, so Jonathan Singer, and I wanted to reintroduce myself. My new role is the Senior Director of Policy Programs with the Boulder Chamber of Commerce. But also uh, wanted to speak a little bit to some of the new individuals here who are sitting with the club, at least new to me. Um, as the senior architect of the legislation that enabled the local regulation of cannabis hospitality. Um, I, I did this for a couple of reasons. As a former social caseworker who spent over 15 years in the field working with in youth prevention, as well as people struggling with substance dependence, I truly believe that the best thing that we can do is regulate this by taking it out of the shadows and providing people with safe options where they can make educated decisions. That being said, I want to express my appreciation for CLAB's efforts over the last several years in providing the mandated, um, or the CLAB's mandate to bring information back to the city council on how to best proceed in this process. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to highlight today specifically, um, but the, the biggest thing, uh, two biggest things is this. Uh, one is uh, the Boulder Chamber does support a smart, carefully regulated system that allows for the existence of cannabis hospitality. Uh, the first reason for this is because we already know that public consumption is happening. Uh, we also know that when things are well regulated like they are for liquor here in Colorado and in Boulder, um, that things proceed in a more safe, more controlled manner. The second reason is this. Uh, we've done a little bit of a bait and switch. Uh, when it comes to, to cannabis. When I say we, I, I'm speaking for, for myself, my former role as a legislator. The voters said, yes, we want people to be able to legally consume cannabis. What we didn't do necessarily is create a venue for that to happen, especially for tourists who are coming here and also for renters who may not own their residence and may not be able to consume in their own place and put their own housing at risk. In terms of uh, a little bit of housekeeping, the one thing that I would recommend um, in terms of what the CLAB could do is really to amend the ordinance requiring a direct representative in the cannabis industry to sit um, on the CLAB, um, have a residential requirement in the city of Boulder. Uh, we know the city of Boulder is a very expensive place. There are a lot of people who do business in Boulder who cannot afford to live here, who would provide critical information to this to this board and be able to provide very good inside information on how to proceed in a way that is implementable for everyone. So um, I will uh, I will leave it at that, but also say I thank you for your time. And while I may not be able to remain here for the duration, I'm happy to take um, any questions later on and discuss those with you later. Thank you again. So Jonathan, what we you've what we've been doing most recently is allowing people to ask questions. Um, 
right after the person's three minutes. Uh, so if you're okay with that. Um, Happy to stick around, of course. Does anyone, and Michael joined us, people might have noticed. Uh, does anyone have questions for Mr. Singer? Evan? You're mute, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Jonathan, nice to meet you. Thank you for, thank you for speaking. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I, my immediate question is right there at the end, you said something to the effect of allowing club industry or a club participant from the industry that is not a resident of the city. Is that accurate? Is that what you were getting at there? Yeah, um, yeah exactly. It would be, and, and yeah, thank you, Mr. Anderson for the question. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with having a preference for somebody who's a city resident, but as long as their business is doing business within the city of Boulder uh, boundaries, what I would hate to see is sort of a, a situation where the club is not able, or the city council is not able to pick from a large group of people because of the restrictive residency requirements. I couldn't agree more. And I'm, I am on this board because I am one of few who is a resident. But I think the reality is that if I think that if we look around a lot of our city staff, we're going to find that most of them don't live in the city. Uh, I think it's reasonable for us to modify our internal rules to allow for industry participant as industry participant. I think it's uh, it will increase the candidate pool dramatically. It's not just Alana and I anymore if that rule changes. So I support what you're asking for, Mr. Singer. I appreciate it. Yeah. Others with questions? Um, I have a few uh, and one would be a follow-up for Evan's question. If we liberalized uh, if, if city council so chose to liberalize the restrictions that you have to live in the city of Boulder in order to serve on this board, uh, it seems like it would be prudent to allow non-industry folks who um, don't live in the city of Boulder also. Is that, would you make, would you encourage I would, that? I would also? contend that that doesn't. You don't have the same tie to the community. We, if 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 I were to move out of the city next month, mm -hmm. it wouldn't change the fact that I'm still an employer of 65 people in the city. If you're an outside resident, you don't have the same tie to the community that a business owner who doesn't live here but operates here every day does. So I would I would say that I would disagree with you, Tom. I don't think that that should be opened up to the public, but it should be opened up to industry industry owners who own businesses in this city. I think it's no less important to have the voice of the guy who is main business is in Denver, but they have a satellite operation here. That's honestly, I think it's gonna, it's going to increase one, it's going to increase the demand for Alana's in my position. It's probably going to increase the sophistication of the individual who's going to get on this board. And perhaps they'll be slightly more diplomatic than me and be more productive than I have been here. So I, I hope that we can take the best candidate, not necessarily on their residency, but on the fact that they pay a hell of a lot of taxes in this city. It doesn't matter where they live, they're still paying a ton to the city and they deserve a chance to be on this board. So I was gonna, hard. I was gonna try to wait, stay away from specifics, but, um, but what the heck, uh, Allison Bailey is not a resident of Boulder and she has some very special um, associations with the city and county and as well as some special, um, I don't know, skills in health education. And I would, I don't know, I guess I would- Yeah, but Tom, her qualification is because of her health participation. That is that is a qualification that allows her to not be a resident. But in terms of just the public spots on this board, I think if, if, you, if you have a special qualification that justifies you being on the board, great, but the general public doesn't really have the same need to participate in local Boulder politics. Okay, uh, I'm, not gonna go to Jeff. I'm not gonna go to Jeff yet, but Robin. Thank you, Chair Kunzman, and thank you for those comments, Evan and Mr. Singer. I, I, I just would ask that we um, recommit to our, what we talked about and sticking with the agenda, I think, we're not supposed to go off on tangents. We're supposed to hear what people have to say, and then there's going to be a time, and I think we'll all have a lot to say about local control, the you know, and the board makeup. Just a request, Chair. Thank you. 
Well, actually, I was just going to suggest that um, we could put that towards the end uh, for future topics uh, to, to be discussed in future meetings. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, I don't want to belabor this, but Jonathan, we don't usually have an opportunity to have you sitting here virtually. And I'm trying to remember your tenure uh, in the state legislature. Can you, can you refresh yeah. my mind? Yeah, I'm also trying to remember it now as a recovering <laughs> lawmaker. No, uh, and just, just to be clear, I'm a resident of Longmont. I work for the Boulder Chamber, so I'm, I'm not angling to be on, on the cloud here. That wasn't my, my ploy here today. But, but in, in all seriousness, um, I, was, I was elected in 2012, um, and I served from January of 2012 through, um, through the end of uh, 2020. So eight and a half years, almost nine years in the state legislature where I chaired the Public Health Care and Human Services Committee and the Local Government Committee, as well as the Committee on Persons with Mental Illness in the Criminal Justice System. Oh, thank you. Uh, so all of us may or may not have had time to work on our um, input into our Google document, which is all the positions that, or the reasons why we took the positions that we did in the different votes. And in doing so, while I was reading through the Colorado Clean Indoor Act, which as you remember, it was before your time but back in 2006, uh, but then it was revised in I believe 2013, 2015 and 2019. And it was somewhere around 13 or 15 that probably during your tenure that cannabis was added to smoke or, you know, the, you know before it was just tobacco. Um, and then cannabis was added. And then 2019, um, it was amended, as you probably know, uh, that to, for several, re, or in several directions, but one was to allow for um, cannabis hospitality, basically. I mean, before the hospitality suite concept was approved in 2020, I believe. Um, it, was the same, it was actually 2019 was the same year for both the amendments to the Colorado Clean Air Act as, as well, Clean Indoor Air Act, as, as well as hospitality. It was kind of a, a you know, double, double dip there. So I guess, can you, in a real, like in a nutshell, you know, in a short paragraph, why were those changes made in 2019, allowing um, cannabis to be consumed in what in the future would be hospitality suites? Yeah, a couple of things. One is uh, there were there were two updates, right? It was it was for the allowance of of Canada's hospitality, and the second thing was uh, an update to the Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act. And the update in 2019 to the Colorado Clean Indoor or Clean Indoor Air Act was solely not based on on what was going on in the world of cannabis hospitality. That was one small part of the update there, um, and it was a bill that I voted for. Um, that being said. Uh, the idea here was to allow these two parallel lines to, to move in concert with each other uh, because um, the real impetus behind the Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act was, was the overwhelming evidence that um, tobacco smoke um, was something that was inherently carcinogenic. And um, cannabis smoke um, is qualitatively different. And we do know that uh, people are consuming cannabis and we don't have a place for them to consume. And while it is legal for somebody to consume nicotine products in their home, and if they're a renter, it is not necessarily the case if you're a renter and you're consuming a cannabis product. So there are a lot of little details, and I won't re reiterate some of the issues with tourism as well, um, that we wanted to make sure that people were able to, to enjoy uh, and imbibe. And, you know, I, I can today walk outside and smoke a cigarette on the sidewalk. Um, public consumption of cannabis is still strictly forbidden. It's illegal. So, so they are two similar but different conversations that need to happen in parallel with each other. Hmm. Okay. Um, thanks. And any other questions or... Okay, then thank you for your comments today, Jonathan, and uh, it's always good to see you. Uh, let's go on to Mr. Gard. Thank you. Um, I, I'll stay within the time limits. I'm pretty familiar <laughs> with how long three minutes last year. 
Um, I wasn't going to speak to about anything, but Mr. Singer brings up a point, and I've been approached to participate uh, as a board member for CLAB many times. What prohibits me from being able to do that is that I live across the street from country, the country club, not in the country club, which puts me in unincorporated Boulder County, although my uh, my official address, my business address is on 26th and Spruce Street. Um, so, you know, it's it's these quirks, I think, that create an issue. I've spent um, the last 10 years working with council, working with MAP, working with CLAB, working on issues, uh, the very issues we work on here. And I do my best through your offices here uh, to do uh, that work. But I have always believed and others have supported that I would be doing more good, uh, at least in their opinion, by being on the board. And perhaps the line to be drawn is not industry or not industry, but maybe whether you own and operate a business uh, within the city. I mean, I think it's about being vested. Um, we had uh, an attorney on the, on the map um, who was really just trying to make connections with marijuana businesses here in Boulder. Um, he did not attend many of the meetings or would send a surrogate uh, in to attend in his stead uh, when it turned out that that was not going to be a, a good marketing uh, thing. But again, I think, you know, it, it is something that I think Mr. Singer brings a good point to, and is that you want people on the club who are vested in the issues, who are um, you know, who care about it. And I think Allison's a great example um, because she brings so much uh, to the board. Um, every one of uh, her discussions, I've come away learning something I didn't know. But I do think um, there may be some, some lines that could be drawn um, about, at least with the industry uh, seats, if not others. I mean, I, I, I like fairness on these things, but something I think should come up for consideration um, obviously I suggested lots of people to be on the board and Evan was one of the people that I said, Hey, you should be on the board. But at the, at, at the same time, you know, I do believe that if you have a vested interest in the subject and you're going to be a helpful participant, maybe just being one, uh, across the street from the country club instead of in it might not, shouldn't maybe prohibit you from being able to be on the board. So thank you. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Gard? Um, Sandra. Thank you, Tara. I don't have a question. Um, I just have a comment with respect to this discussion. And I just want to be clear for those that may not know that the requirement for city residency on a board is uh, based on our charter. And um, any changes to our charter would require an election. So um, it's not an easy fix. Uh, I just want you to understand that in the context of this discussion. And it also feels a little bit like um, it might be outside the scope right now of, of, of the purview of this uh, particular board. But the other thing I wanted to clarify as well is that with respect to ex officios, they are not required to be within um, the city residency and, and that's the, a distinction I'm not sure that was clear or discussed here or, or probably uh, known to everyone. So I just thought I'd mention that. Thanks. Sandra, could I ask a follow-up question? Hello. Hi, yes. Um, so does ex officio mean something very defined in the charter also, or is there a potential to maybe expand the role of the ex officio member? To, to my knowledge, there isn't any definition in our code for ex officio. We've always interpreted it as non-voting member. We have that scenario in other boards, and that's the precedence that we've taken is that they're just simply non-voting uh, members, but they contribute to the discussion and to the board board's understanding and knowledge in a particular area of specialty. So this is not necessarily a question for Jeff, but because it could be for Jeff or Jonathan, but I was reading somebody's opinion piece when I was going through all the um, Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act stuff. 
uh, that someone suggested, as it is in some communities, and I wish, I, I'm not sure if it's officially um, legal in parts of New York City that you can smoke marijuana openly, but it sure seemed like that last time I was in New York City. Um, if, if I'm not, I'm not actually suggesting this, but it, it's more of a hypothetical. If public consumption were legal, then there'd be less reason to have hospitality lounges. Is that possibly correct, Jeff? Thank you, Tom. Um, the bottom line is with this is that, yes, of course, that it would be the case. The reason that I brought uh, hospitality lounges and advocated for them is because so many people don't want to be walking up and down the Pearl Street Mall and smelling that of the businesses. It's sort of a good neighbor thing. I wasn't as concerned about the profitability of the businesses, but the impact that 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 open consumption uh, really has on people who uh, don't want to participate in that. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to you know, worry about that. And that's what ends up happening now, because again, the police have actual real problems all over the place and they're not enforcing at, at the campus level or on the street or in Pearl Street or anything, any kind of public consumption stuff. If they see you doing it, they'll tell you to put it out. But the penalties are so low now that it's not worth clogging up the court system to, uh, to, to do the ticket. So we have de facto public consumption now. I just thought by bringing it indoors and by bringing it into a safer environment uh, like that, it would have less of an impact, be a better neighbor policy, I think, really for the cannabis folks who are for it and also keeping uh, being respectful of people who don't want that in their in their face like that. Stacy, you have a question. Dr. Green. Yeah, we can do Stacy, I think, unless you're super <laughs> OK, um, so I really feel strongly against public consumption, but I am, I think, as everyone knows, relatively speaking, with the right provisions and safeguards in place in favor of the hospitality establishments. I think, at least from my standpoint, one of the reasons I am in support, and I think this was already said, was to try and get it off the streets. I mean, I think a lot about youth walking around, if there's public consumption, that just really, in my mind, opens the door to a lot more problems uh, with youth use, as opposed to trying to, like uh, Mr. Singer had said, streamline this, put it in an environment where there is a set of controls in place. We do have an opportunity to educate patrons. Granted, youth would not be allowed in these establishments, uh, at least with what we've been voting so far. But it would really be, in my opinion, the absolutely wrong move to just make public consumption legal in Boulder. As it is, I think people, I think Mr. Gard just said, like visitors or whatnot to the state, um, people come here and wonder if it is already allowed because there is already a lot of it that goes on, even though it's not technically legal. And uh, like we were just hearing the police mostly just kind of slap on the wrist if that um, it, it just feels like the totally wrong direction to be moving um, to start allowing people to smoke in on the street, as opposed to having these, you know, very controlled environments where we could at least have some semblance of say in what's going on and who's doing it. Okay, just to restate for the record, I was not advocating that. Um, just want to make that perfectly clear. Uh, Evan, and I would also remind us, as Robin did, that we want to get to content. Um, so, but go ahead, Evan. Oops, you're mute. We are, we are, we are here to follow the charge of regulating marijuana in a manner similar to alcohol, not in a manner similar to tobacco. So, <laughs> we don't allow drinking on the street. We shouldn't allow smoking on the street. That's it. <laughs> Okay, um, any other questions? Otherwise, I think we will close public comment. Caitlin, nobody else has their hands raised or no other. Make, that, make that official? Yeah, we can call one more time. If you are here to get public comment, you can raise your hand. Otherwise, we will move on. And I see no other hands raised, so we can move on to agenda item three. Policy suggestion forms received for the January meeting, and there were none received for January. 
So um, we can move on to agenda item number four, which is Boulder Marijuana Hospitality City Provisions Continued Discussions and I'll hand it over. Well, actually, we remember we changed the agenda order a we little did. bit. Matters from senior council. Wait. Yes, thank you yeah. so much for the reminder. So um, we will be changing the agenda slightly. So we're going to jump down to um, agenda item number five, matters from senior council, because I believe that um, council has some comments regarding something specific on the agenda. Well, the, just an FYI, the meeting agenda that was sent out in everybody's meeting packet has it, number four matters from senior council. So that's just, okay, thank we, you. Change, we changed it around a little bit. Thanks, I was looking at the original agenda instead of the... Yeah, well, Sandra, you're in the spotlight for a second or a moment, whatever. As many moments oh. as you want. Thanks, Tom. Um, I, I, I guess I, I'm not sure exactly what it is that the, the board would like me to discuss. I have heard through the grapevine that there are issues um, related to conflict of interest. I can talk about that if that's the issue. I've heard through the grapevine other issues. So I, I think really this is the opportunity for the board uh, to ask if there are any questions or issues that they would like me to opine about. Well, also maybe to give, I, maybe I should have created the um, atmosphere for a second because uh, Brian and I as the chair and vice chair often or always do uh, meet with city staff prior to the meeting and we come up with an agenda. Um, and during that meeting to discuss the agenda, uh, uh, I think it was both of us, Brian and I asked Sandra if she would be willing to talk about the conflict of interest um, issue that came up last time. And then I'm just gonna leave the door open for a second issue that we talked about that day when we planned this meeting about whether, yes, one can revote anything, but is it wise to revote? Um, one or more things. Remember that discussion? So I'm happy to discuss any issues that the board has. Um, I, I know that Kathy Haddock provided um, some legal advice in an October 21, 2021 meeting. I reviewed that meeting. I reviewed the documents related to that meeting. Um, I, I don't um, have anything more to add except that I agree with Kathy Haddock's um, advice and, and perhaps taking a step back I would say that typically um, if there is someone that believes that there's a potential conflict of interest issue that that be raised um, individually with the attorney that's representing the board so the in the best of the scenarios you know, if you thought that there was a conflict or if you, you yourself were concerned about the potential for a conflict of interest, you would bring it up with um, the attorney uh, with the city that represents this board and have an opportunity to have a discussion about whether or not there may be a conflict and to get a recommendation from the city attorney. Um, so that's the, the best scenario. Um, Every uh, code of conduct um, analysis is very sp fact specific. And so um, it's not just that we have these canned answers, they really have to be applied to every fact specific circumstance related to the individual. And um, it's also a decision that the person holds whether or not to recuse themselves. We provide the legal advice and in um, circumstances uh, where the person seeks the legal advice of the city attorney, it provides a safe harbor for any sort of uh, repercussions or sanctions that may be imposed on the individual. Um, so as I mentioned before, I, I went through and I reviewed everything. I agree with Kathy's uh, recommendation. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. 
Okay, questions? Okay. Hi, Sandra, how are you doing? Um, good. Um, I had a question about that just in terms of, um, you know, if if it's the, on recommendation of, of the um, the person present, like a, the attorney present that that's for the board, um, also known as Kathy in this in this um, situation, if if the recommendation is to step out of a conversation, but you disagree um, and you decide to stay against the advice of the attorney, um, it, that's what you're saying in terms of you would, you know, any kind of repercussions or whatever would be exactly. on you. Yeah, you. You run the risk of mm -hmm. having those repercussions and not having the protections. Right. And then if, say you do take it, right, it, which has happened in this case, you do take the advice of the attorney and then get different legal advice saying that you didn't have to because it wasn't specifically referencing something that was within that scope. And then you want to then have your voice heard on that matter. The legal that, advice that's only, that only applies is from the city attorney. So uh, a person can get their own legal advice. No sure. one is barred from doing that. Sure. And it's up to them whether they want to take that legal advice right. or not. But the only legal advice that quote unquote counts in terms of protection are from the city attorney. Okay. Okay, well, that mostly answers my question. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. Okay. I think we're ready to move on. Okay. And then, so um, referencing the annotated agenda, so thank you for pointing it out. Can we hold on one second? Did we, were we talking about the other topic that, that you guys had brought up? Tom, you brought up two topics and we just talked about the one. I'm not saying we have to, because I don't really know what the reference is, but. Well, it'll either come up or it won't come up. <laughs> okay. In the interest of moving on. And Sandra's, you know, will, or, you know, willing and able to participate at any point in the time that we need further discussion, so. I'm happy to jump in if the issue comes up. Yeah. Um, Brian, I'm blocking on why we moved. Well, actually, Alana, you had some things that we were talking about, uh, members of the board. Um, somebody else texted me about something. I'm trying to remember what. It looks like Evan had matters as well, but I do have um, matters if we're moving to the next agenda item. Yeah, matters from the chair and members of the board. Brian, was there anything you and I meant to bring up at this point in time? Maybe only the Prop 122 conversation we might be having, but that just only developed in the last couple of days here. But there's nothing new on that. Um, no. Only that we'll be meeting with um, folks from Naropa and Prop 122 organizer, um, potentially the week of the 23rd. And I guess the other thing at some point in time, we were going to mention that you and I um, visited Stella's Cucina, Cucina and got a tour. Um, and um, it's an interesting facility. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to answer that. I was invited and I decided to invite Brian with me. Um, and even they were careful enough to make sure that we, we weren't violating the rules uh, by having two people there, um, but we we knew that ahead of time. So, um, all right, Alana, did you want to say anything, including something about what you and I just discovered, or what you discovered and point, pointed to my attention? Um, I'll leave that to you, Tom. I do have a matter that I've been trying to raise for the last three meetings, though, so I do appreciate the the time. I respectfully did not go with this item after two of our members had left the meeting last month out of no precedent of the board, um, just my own desire to have the full board here. Um, 
Uh, so I shared Jeff Gard's advice to me regarding how I should evaluate matters that come before the board with regard to my position in a cannabis company in Boulder. And as I we talked about as a board um, in the last month's meeting, um, it's Jeff's interpretation goes further and is reminiscent of the original advice I was given um, by the city attorney's office when I joined this board. Um, it differentiates in that um, just by being an incidental member of a group of people that could potentially benefit, that is not a criteria of conflict of interest. Um, in as much as I, Alana Malone, and my company cannot benefit from the availability of hospitality establishments in Boulder, um, we would require other things in order to benefit, such as increased square footage of cultivation facilities. That's the single policy measure that would directly benefit me and my business here in Boulder. Um, and as you'll note, I submitted that in a policy suggestion form at the beginning of my time on CLAB, and then I've never raised it since because I realized we could have the conversation, but I'd be recused from it because there's no way I could conscionably um, advocate for that policy because I would be the first one to want to benefit from it. Um, I don't find the concentrate permission in hospitality to be anything of the sort. And I think my role rather implores me to be a voting member on that. And so I would like to raise a motion to revote on allowing concentrates the same language of the original motion to allow my vote on the matter to be recorded. And that's my first matter. Well, I guess, was it, I think it was you uh, that asked uh, the conversation that we had planning this meeting is that I think to well, what we discussed is that in order for a new vote to be done, then first the board needs to vote as to whether a new board or new vote can be done. Yep. So my motion is to see if a majority of the board members would allow a revote or would support a revote so that I could memorialize my position on that vote. So I'll just jump in from a procedural perspective. Um, the only way for a reconsideration on a motion is for someone on the prevailing side of the motion passed at the subsequent meeting to make that motion to have a second and then for that motion to be approved. Well, there's also the issue that we talked about during the um, retreat about, I'm, I'm not taking away from your motion, but we talked about pre, what was the term? Pre something motions, pre- Tom, this is the third meeting I'm trying to raise this topic. I don't think I'm springing any surprises on you. Oh, okay. So just to Sandra's point, the only person who voted in favor of the previous motion that Alana wants to revisit uh, was no longer a member of this board. So there's in fact no one on this board who voted affirmatively for the motion. So is that what you mentioned? She didn't say affirmatively, she said prevailing. So that would be oh, okay. the no votes. And listen, you guys can say no, but I want to let you know where I stand on the fact that I recused myself during that meeting. I wanted to provide the context for the benefit of Evan, as well as every other member, as well as future members that are in my position. I think it should be clarifying and helpful to think about that different lens as to whether somebody is incidentally part of a group that could potentially benefit versus being an exclusive member of that group that would definitively benefit. So if um, I'm so understanding you correctly, Alana, you, you're disregarding the advice and, and making a, a unilateral personal decision to- I'm not full, fully disregarding. I've had meetings with Kathy specifically regarding my position in the industry and that conflict of interest title. It was a separate meeting and it was not recorded and it wasn't part of that vote recording. But I did my I did do research and seek to learn from her and from the city attorney's office about conflict of interest. I'm in an incredibly unique position, as I hope everybody on this board can appreciate um, that I'm being called to 
support the activity of this policy board because of where I come from in this industry. Um, I did take Kathy's advice and the advice I received from her at the beginning of my time here on CLAB actually aligns with the advice I received from Jeff Gard. It just happens to be distinct from the advice she gave me in the moment during that meeting. Well, and I listened to the meeting and she denied that she gave you any advice that you've just described. So I, it's obviously I, I can't speak for Kathy. I, you know, I, all I know is that I have analyzed and reviewed the law and the facts in this situation. And, and I agree with the recommendation of recusal um, based on your unique circumstances. Um, I've even gone back and looked at other situations where we have given advice to uh, members on planning board and otherwise. And, um, and I do believe that your situation would fall within that, that category. I really appreciate everything that you have to say and share as well as Kathy. I am aware that this is my decision to make. This is an incredibly unique situation and I do not find myself in conflict with this vote. I do not find any way that I could benefit from voting in favor of this. And I ultimately have to make the call myself. And um, really just, we can move on as quickly as my board members want to chime in. Um. Before I go to Evans first and then Stacy and then Kate, um, another option for you to register your concerns and or thinking or even discuss the issue of recus recusal. Um, I, I didn't hit refresh on this Google Doc, but I don't I see that you did not comment on that topic yet. Um, at least not that I can find. Um, and that would be another way for you to, you know, how many words are we allowed? 150? Whoever knows. Thanks, Tom. Evan? Yeah, I <clears throat> obviously I agree with Alana's stance on this. Uh, I think that the reality is what Brian just brought up kind of got passed over, but it is absolutely true that. Uh, there is, I was not a participant in that vote, nor was Alana. And given that they're the individual who brought it or who voted for it is not here today. I, in, a pro, in the process of going through and making my comments for these recommendations, I think I, I noted something in here. And unfortunately I didn't have the ability to share this with all of you immediately until I got Allison's permission to copy into that thing this afternoon. But I think there's a there's a there's a technical calculation that we're not making with the language that was used in that motion, and I think it it renders the recommendation one way or the other kind of a moot point. Concentrates are much more complicated than just the term concentrate. I think when when this conversation was had, the conversation related to dabbing and rigs and the the traditional smoking of concentrates, but it did not go around the conversation of vaporizers. And vaporizers are the dominant force when it comes to concentrate consumption, most especially when it comes to concentrate consumption in a socially acceptable manner with 35 plus year old adults. Uh, I think that what we chose to prohibit was actually the primary mode of consumption preferred by the average 35 plus consumer in our entire city. The idea that we would not be allowed to have vaporizer pens inside of one of these hospitality operations to mandate somebody to combust flour is incredibly misguided. And I don't think it was the intention of this board to prohibit the least offensive of the secondhand smokes, if you wanna call them that. I, I think we need to consider a little more deeply the detail of what we're recommending here. And I made a motion that I shared with all of you earlier that we will get to soon enough, but I think it's an appropriate thing for us to look a little more closely at this subject before we pass off recommendations that would be hard to explain if somebody were to ask, why did we ban dabbing while simultaneously ban a <laughs> the lowest dose form of administration that we have available to us? So. 
I wanted to bring it up later, but because Alana brought it up now, I, I, I think it's, it's worth, worth mentioning. So. Stacy. I appreciate all the comments on this. Um, I think in past meetings, Kathy had led us to believe that we could always have additional votes. So like if we want to get more granular on this, like Evan is saying might be helpful. And given what he's saying, I agree, maybe we do need to you know, break this out into more detail, but those would look more like additional votes as opposed to re-voting. And Alana, my question to you would be, I, I mean, just from my own understanding, I, I just am not totally clear why you want to re-vote on it because of what I'm hearing council say, you know, like theoretically could put you at risk, number one. And number two, I'm looking at the members who were against and unless something has changed, if those same members who are here today are still against, then the vote's probably going to look the same. And the only difference with you taking on this risk then would be having recorded that you were either for it or against it. So I guess I just want to understand from you a little more why you would want to re-vote on this. Like, why is that a big deal? It, it, unless like we were sitting here in a situation where, and I don't mean to assume everyone's voting on this the same way. So I apologize if I'm doing that, but <clears> let's <throat> that is true, that it wouldn't change anything. Like we'd revote and very potentially it would still fail because the members who voted against it maybe would vote the same way. So I guess that's why I'm not understanding why we would want to do that. And then, you know, to Evan's point, maybe we do need to get more detailed votes and break this out more clearly. Um, I would just add one thing from my medical perspective on concentrates in general and dosing, they are not a lower form of dosing. Like in, it doesn't matter. Like that's just not actually accurate. And I, I think that's an important point. Like we're even in a vape pen format, you're still dealing with a 90% or roughly say 70 to 90 ish percent concentrate material. And when you calculate dosing, medicinally speaking, the concentration of the medicine, or in this case, recreational product has to be taken into account as part of the equation. So it doesn't matter if you're taking a half a hit, right? Like off a vape pen, it still could be a higher dose than a flower material. My concern against this and the reason I voted the way I did was because there is so much unknown. We don't know that it's safer. So even though there is massive usage of this, I agree that clearly seems to be a majorly preferred method. It feels like everywhere I go, I see people using these, whether that's tobacco or cannabis or both. The jury's out on it. We don't know. Like, it, it, what if this is like the 60s and we didn't know, you know, about tobacco the way we do now. And then we're saying, okay, let's use that in our establishments. At least for me, a big part of the hospitality conversation is saying, okay, like we don't have settled science, but let's do the best that we can with the science that does exist, right? And where there's a lot of question, I wouldn't want to put that out there for our community and support it for our community or make members of our community, even if it wasn't, you know, maybe it was an assumption, think that if somebody's saying, yeah, this is safe and fine, just do it this way. So I, I guess my first question, Alana, would be like, you know, why do you feel so committed to revoting on this? And then the other part would be, would it make more sense just to maybe start making new motions, like Evan is saying, for this, you know, more line by line if we have to go on these products more specifically. Yeah. Thanks, Stacey and everyone. Um, I do want to clarify what's driving this. And it's um, kind of one of the less desirable <laughs> characteristics of mine, which is that I'm just procedurally incredibly um, attentive and uh, nerdy around procedures and want to make sure that certainly myself as an exemplar for those who will come after me, that I'm providing the best example possible. And I regret recusing myself in that moment. So it's hard for me to feel like I have 
um, done the best job possible and um, you know, set the right precedent for these industry seats and this incredibly unique board and this incredibly unique time, this incredibly unique community, so on and so forth. Um, and then your voting record as a board member is essentially your job. So it's, I, I feel like I want to, you know, vindicate myself and the, the mistake that I made as well as fulfill my responsibility to the highest possible level. Um, I did zero lobbying on to members around this vote ever, never, ever, ever um, have I, or would I lobby you guys to vote one way or not? Other on a on a matter like this that tends to be controversial, as well as um, me tied up in the center of it. So um, has nothing to do with any anticipation of a change of vote, but I do appreciate the question. Um, and then, I mean, I just, I have another matter, but I'll raise it later. And it comes back to something else that you said, Stacey, but I'll let everyone else keep going. Um, Kate, and before I've got Kate, Robin, then Evan, um... I would just advise, let's be brief, everyone. <laughs> so we can move on. Well, I'm not super concise, Tom. So okay. I'll do my best, but um, I, I just wanna- I should have said I just, concise. Right. <laughs> I just wanna say that like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really drive just, just, I have more comments about all the things that are being talked about, but I really wanna just talk about what, Alana brought up. Um, and I just want to say that I don't think it's our job to tell her whether she should or she shouldn't. She gets the advice that she would gets and then she makes the choice for herself. We can bring it up and we think it's a, a conflict of interest. The attorney can say what they think. And if she wants to revote, then I mean, I'm not a voting member. So it doesn't really like my opinion is that we should let whoever who decides that they want to vote vote. And if that means a revote, then we should take a revote. Um, in this specific example, it's like telling somebody that works at a brewery that's on the alcohol, um, the liquor board, that they can't talk about whether or not a bar should serve beer. Like this is this is this is really like a very basic thing. So that's my opinion on this specific example. But I really think that we should focus on how do we want to deal with revotes, and if a if a member asks for a revote, and is it really our position to tell that person whether or not they should take the risk or not? That's their choice. Um, so that's my opinion on that. Um, Robin? Thanks. I actually really agree with Kate on that. I, with respect, Alana, I, I, I did feel like that was a conflict of interest being the product category that it was, but I appreciate your perspective on that. If you wanted to take another revote and we came to a way to do that, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I also just want to thank Stacy for her comments on the concentrate issue and some of the things Evan brought forward. The language in that motion is very specific. It, it says marijuana concentrates, and that's a state definition. And it's not a method or a delivery system. It's actually talking about the state definition of marijuana concentrates. So there was some care and thought that was put into that for what it's worth. Um, those are my comments. Thank you. Evan? I, <clears throat> I appreciate everybody's opinion on this. Obviously, it's an emotional <laughs> thing as much as a technical thing. But I think I have to bring up the question of, I have a license in every category in the city. Alana has a license for cultivation and for production. The, the the argument that she would have to recuse herself over the con conversation about marijuana concentrate would imply that I would have to recuse myself over the conversation of marijuana flower and marijuana concentrate and marijuana edibles and marijuana retail. And that's just not the purpose. I don't believe that that is the purpose of this board if we are going to make the argument that the industry representatives must recuse themselves from any category of voting that would include their own businesses. Uh, I don't think that I was selected for this board to recuse myself from every vote, which is, I mean, in looking back at the proposal that we're about to make to the city, I'd have to recuse myself from every single one of these, because of course they, they could in some way, if I voted or if I voted in one direction or the other, benefit my business, of course they can. That's, that's what we're here to do. <laughs> I produce every single one of these types of products so do I have to remove myself from voting on every single one of these? Is that is that the opinion of the, the board and the city attorney's office? 
I'm going to jump past uh, Stacy first, Sandra. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to address Evan's question. And um, I think that, first of all, it needs to be on a case by case basis. And um, simply the, by virtue of you being a representative as an industry doesn't um, does create some issues and we have to analyze them factually. And there are many issues in which you can provide your perspective as an industry representative that don't impact um, directly financially the fact uh, of what products are sold. So, you know, there, there's lots of other areas that you all have already talked about that impact um, the question of whether or not there should be hospitality establishments within the city of Boulder. And they don't all relate to the products that will be allowed to be sold. Stacy. Just given everything everyone's saying, I think Kate said it first that we shouldn't stand in the way of people voting. We've heard council's opinion. It sounds like all of us are supportive of a revote. So if I'm understanding that one of us who voted against it has to motion to revote, then I'll make the motion to revote on this issue. Sandra, did you, you still have your hand up? I don't know if it's newly up or not up from before. I'm sorry, it's an old hand, so I'll put it down. Thanks. Okay, in that case, Michael. Yeah, thanks. And uh, thanks everybody for your comments. Um, I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm sitting here listening to this conversation. I'm, I'm pretty shocked. Um, to me, it seems like we as a board have been assigned an attorney to advise us on what is within the parameters of the city charter, what's within the city regulations. And if there's an issue with respect to a conflict of interest and we have a city attorney telling us that yes, they believe that there is a conflict and that a member should recuse themselves, it seems to me that we are certainly calling into question the integrity of the votes that we're putting forward when we have members who are going against the advice of our own attorney. Um, so if that's what this board elects to do, I certainly hope that at the very least it's noted in any recommendation that goes forward that that was a, that that person voted against the advice of the city attorney. I think I'm sorry, I just want to be clear, Sandra, you had said earlier that if a member wishes to not recuse himself, say, and vote despite like Michael saying, your very clear advice, that's their choice to do so. Is, is that right or do they have that is to? correct. So then Michael, I'm that's the only way, I'm just sitting here thinking like, we're just talking in circles. Should we revote? Because like I was saying earlier, it doesn't, I'm gonna be surprised if the vote turns out differently and then maybe we could be done with this. Alana can be on record, that's her risk, her choice, and we can move on. Right. And, and, and Stacey, I totally agree with you. But you know what? Frankly, Alana, if you want your position to be known, we can put that on the record. You've already come forward and said that you would have voted differently and that you're not going to follow the advice of the city attorney and that you've received contrary advice from your own attorney or from Jeff Gard. I mean, the reality is, you know, as a lawyer, I know this, but the reality is you can always get a different opinion from what some what from what other some other lawyer is giving you. So that's a, we will run into that same issue every time if we're going to have this debate on whether or not we're going to follow the city attorney's advice. Because if, if the city attorney comes to me and says, Michael, you need to recuse yourself, I can guarantee you I can run out and hire someone else to give me contrary advice. So it, I, I think we're like we, we are we are going down a very slippery slope if we are not going to be following the advice of our own city attorney. And, and, and I'm not trying to take away from your position, Alon, and how you feel about this. Um, I do appreciate where you're coming from. I, I certainly recognize that this is your family's livelihood, but I think that the same goal that you're trying to accomplish can certainly be be made by putting it on the record that you know you received other advice. Um, you would have voted differently if you were able to vote or if you participated in that vote. Um, I, I just, I mean, I, I just am not liking the direction that we are headed in 
if we are now going to be recalling every vote because the city attorney told somebody that they feel about, you know, someone should recuse themselves. I would just comment, and I'm having a tough time with internet, that there's a reason that it's up to the individual to recuse themselves. This comes down to, <clears throat> to reality at the end of the day, uh, which is why I think it's probably on the member. I'm having a tough time with the internet, sorry. Um, and I know I have a conscience, Michael, and I know that I cannot directly benefit from my participation in this vote. And I know it, that you have feel very strongly. You can just dialogue with me if, if you're just responding to me. Um, but it, it's because there's a burden of proof. And like Evan said, if if the city attorney's office was going to tell me that this was a conflict, then so would the vote to allow flower. So would every other vote. And I'm not willing to recuse myself from every single vote um, on this board. I don't think that's my job, my duty, my responsibility. So let's disagree. And, and, and I think that sums it up a lot. I think, you know, we can agree to disagree. I, I certainly do not agree with your position that, um, you know, and, and particularly with, with Evan's position. I do think that, you know, to, to what Sandra said, this is a case by case basis. And yes, if we are going to be voting on an issue that's going to impact one of Evan's businesses, if we are going to do this right, and Alana, you said you're a stickler for following procedure, then each one of those votes should go back to the city attorney and we should be seeking the advice. Is there a conflict of interest? And if there is, and you or Evan or whoever that person is decides not to follow that advice and, and you want to cast your vote, you know, that's on you. So I just want to clarify a process at this point. Sorry if I'm jumping to Q, just in the capacity as vice chair, that we had a motion, we have a second. So we are in a discussion phase now, but we should sort of keep an eye on sort of coming to a, calling for a vote at some point. Do we have a second or we have, we have a motion and a motion, I believe. I didn't hear any seconds, but, but I'm not sure that Al Alana's motion, on Alana, exactly what, your, what was your motion? I think you're right, Tom. I believe it was um, Stacy's motion, and I don't think that I've heard a second. Right. Okay. I apologize. I misheard the second. Then. No worries. Um, I want to clarify also in making that motion that I 100% agree with Michael on this, that if the city attorney, I sit on other boards and there's votes that I wish I could participate in because I do want my opinion heard because it feels pretty important for that topic on whatever the details. But we have, the, like you said, you're a policy person, Alana, and these policies are in place for a reason. And so it really, like as much as I want to like say, okay, let's just revote and move on with this so we can actually get to the rest of our agenda and not keep talking about this and reading about it in our packets week after week. I, I really am against the idea of this particular thing. My motion to revote is simply for getting through this and moving on. And if you want to take on the risk, that would be your choice. But I really want to be clear that I am 100% on the same page as what Michael just said. Like, if you are supposed to be recusing yourself according to council for this board specifically, then it makes sense to do so. It, there's reasons for that. It puts yourself at risk. It may put other for unforeseen consequences at risk. So I just want to move on from this. Um, however, we need to do that. Uh, Sandra, does the um, second need to come from someone who was who voted in the majority? Prevailing side, yes. That's why I said yes. Okay. Evan, you had your hand up, but you took it back down. Well, not to complicate things, but... Um, I just want to add that I really appreciate the discussion that we've had today, and I think that... I really think the board's better off that we've, you know, all shared a variety of perspectives on this, and... Um, I know there's lots of other matters, too. I have some. Yeah. Well, so I'm not saying we would or should or could, but if I'm not mistaken, Green Dot Labs now sells flour or produces, not sells, excuse me, 
uh, grows flower. Um, we have been growing flowers since 2013, and we've been recognized as a breeder, genetics house, and cultivator for a very long time. So there might be just as much reason, if you recuse yourself from the concentrate thing, to recuse yourself from flower as well as Evan might have the same. Um, well, but I guess strength. it would be interesting for someone to draw the line. Like if we want to keep going with this conversation on conflict, then it would be interesting to hear somebody explain where we benefit and how from this vote, because it would seem fair. Evan. I <clears throat> absolutely loathe that we are having this conversation. Um, so I'm going to make it even worse by bringing up the fact that we have to look at every person on this call right now who is a voting member, and we have to consider who could benefit from a vote one way or the other. And Robin, I hate to bring you into this on a personal level, but I have to ask, you do work for a, a political individual, yes? Yeah, I do, but I'm not here in that capacity in any way, shape, or form. I have my own experience, Evan. I'm not here on Repamabile's behalf, not in any way, shape, or form. In fact, okay. in many of these issues, we have disagreements. I'm here for myself. Okay. Well, I, I can say that as an owner of Fortiner, I do not have a hand in making the operational business decisions for the company anymore. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I stepped down in that capacity. So uh, uh, perhaps there's a specific argument that could be made there, but I think it's a dangerous conversation for us to invite industry participants and then tell them that they can't vote <laughs> related to the operations of the reason why they're there. Uh, I, it's it's very difficult. And this is, we're going back and forth around this, but the reality is I think that council should be asked for their formal opinion about whether or not the industry participants on CLAB should have a vote in subject matters related to the products that they produce. Because I, I, I strongly believe that if we got that opinion officially, it would conflict with Kathy's position and it would say that, yes, of course, we selected these people so that their opinion could be heard. And I think that we keep going back and forth, but we have yet to ask council that question directly. And I know that the city attorney's office has an opinion about it, but I believe that at the end of the day, the council is the pe are the people who selected us. The city attorneys didn't choose Alana and I. The council- well, Actually, Evan, I did create, I did help create the ordinance that created this board. So I'm very much aware of the discussions that were held surrounding it. And so I don't think that just because we decided or council decided, excuse me, that they were going to have industry representatives, they decided to throw out the code of conduct. So there are real reasons why the code of conduct is there and we should evaluate them on a case by case basis. I welcome you to meet with me individually so we can talk through these issues. I don't think this is a great use of time right now. Personally, I think the chair or vice chair needs to call for a second to see if there's a second on this motion and move on. Um, I'm gonna, I, I agree and I still have heard no other, uh, no seconds. So Michael. Just real quick, um, Alana and Evan, I, I agree with you specifically, Alana, your point that you know, I think this this issue needs to be clarified because I, I do find it surprising that um, council did appoint industries, you know, industry representatives to this board and give them voting power on this board. And I do think that it is confusing. Um, I just tend to be a stickler for rules and and I tend to fall more to if there's a potential conflict of interest and we seek the advice of council and council tells us, yes, there's a, there's a conflict. Um, I would like to see this board follow that advice. Um, again, if, if we're not following that advice, I think it calls into question the integrity of the board. But I, I do agree with you that this issue needs to be, it needs to be clear to all of us because I don't think that it is. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, there was an inaccurate or there was an inconsistent application here. If we were supposed to recuse ourselves, then we should be required to have recused ourselves on every one of these votes. We voted on very specific things. Kathy's fully aware that Alana has a flower license. Why did she not 
tweak her desire to have Alana recuse herself when that subject came up. It's it's the the, in, the inconsistency of the application is the thing that brings great concern to me. If I was told right out of the gate, hey, you're basically ex officio, then that's different. But that's not what I was asked to do. So I'd love to get an opinion on this, but I do really want to move on because I got other things I want to talk about. Please. Stacey. I think what Sandra said is that we're supposed to do it on a case by case basis. I don't think there's meant to be a general rule that industry members can't vote on, you know, issues pertaining in some way to their topic. I think it is case by case. So, you know, it would be nice to hear more about it, but uh, I'm going to withdraw my motion at this point and I really hope we can move on. Which is what I was going to do soon next anyways. If there's no second, then the motion dies. Um, so this point of order is still a standing motion from Alana to revisit um, marijuana. It, uh, it didn't seem valid based on what Sandra said. So maybe there's an easy way we can clear it. That's correct. Thank you, Alana. Yeah, because the motion would have to come from one of the members that voted in the majority um, to first even bring up a vote, which is what Stacy did, right? I think if I recall. Yeah, and I figured to myself, like I said, if Alana wants to take on that risk, that's up to her. But I think after hearing what Michael said that we have all this documented, anyone who's interested in historically going through all this will see very clearly that Alana was very much against having to recuse herself. And if that, that's why I asked Alana, why do, why are we even thinking about this? And so if that's the reason that, you know, she wanted to make sure she was on record accordingly, I agree with Michael, that's real clearly there at this point. Well, and to answer Evan, the reason that it even came up during the issue of concentrates and why it was applied inconsistently, if you listen to the, the audio from the October 2021 meeting, which admittedly is hard to listen to because the audio was not, there were times where I actually asked you to repeat what you said, uh, Alana, during that meeting. And then when you repeated what you said, the audio uh, to replay, I still couldn't understand. Um, so that's another issue altogether. But um, several of us listened to the audio from that meeting. And, um, and that's why it came up under the issue of concentrates, Evan, versus didn't come up under flower. So anyways, with no, uh, Brian, are you okay with, if there's no second and no appropriate motion? As I said earlier, Alana, I would want you to, or invite you to uh, put all of your comments in the Google document. Thanks, Tom. Do we have, I was under the impression the due date was January 3rd. Did we get an extension to through this meeting? Well, or is there another update? It's a, it's a, um, or we'll get there. You can update us when we get to that agenda item. I, yeah, I actually didn't finish all my comments. So, I mean, I finished. Yeah. I think it's a fluid document right now. So, um, was there anything else? Oh, I brought members from the board or Evan, are you? What, what you were hoping to bring up, was there a time in the agenda that you were gonna bring up what you wanted to bring up? I assumed it would be during the, the uh, I forget the exact term, but yes, the from members from uh, matters, matters from the chair and members of the board. Yeah, that was kind of the, uh, the thought to bring up, bring up these things now. But the reality is I think it's more important for us to move to the marijuana hospitality city provisions and the continued discussion there, I think. The document that we have in front of us now that's kind of the collective collective notes of everybody is the uh is the point of or contains all of the uh conversation i'd like to be able to have uh, i don't know exactly how we want to approach that but there are a couple issues i i wanted to bring to everybody's attention and see if there was an interest in a few additional motions before we make our final final uh recommendations to the to the council the 
there are some some technicalities I think that got overlooked and I at least want to bring them up for discussion if I can. Okay, um, so as the chair, I'm just looking at time is now 4.23. We'll be talking for some time. Uh, do you want to, me to just choose an arbitrary break time in about 40-ish minutes? Or do you want to, I mean, that's probably is best, right? Yeah, I mean, I do we I see some yeah. thumbs up. All right, so that's a good segue. Uh, but how do you want do you want to start up the top start off the topic of uh how um, I just want to just want to make sure that everyone had a chance uh that if there are other members of the oh, board who wanted to I, bring anything I, up and Kate has her hand up too I did not I just saw that sorry my bad yeah um I, I did have um I did have something to bring up um that I like had talked about a couple of times in different situations but haven't been able to be here when we talked about it. Um, there was something I talked about at the beginning. I, I can't. Rem I can't remember when it was. And then I also put it into the retreat information. Um, I had. I mean, it kind of lends itself to, to the conversation about ex officio members and what they can and can't do in terms of obviously not voting. Um, but I had asked a question on whether or not ex officio members could make motions or provide seconds. Um, and I haven't heard whether or not that that is something that is allowed. Um, or not, or if it's something that we could request, if it's something that the board could do, or if it's something that no boards can have done. Um, I had talked, um, I had sent a message to, I think, Kathy and, and Michonne back in the day to just say, like, could I just make a motion and, and then not make seconds? So therefore, someone on the board would have to make a decision um, on whether or not it would move forward. So anyway, um, that was my question, because it's never really been directly answered. And I've asked it a few times. So. Uh, Kathy or Sandra, do you want to? Do you want me to answer you now, Kate? <laughs> if you if you or, know the answer, I mean, I've asked answer, it. Yeah. <laughs> I've asked it a couple of times. Yeah, and never, I'm yeah. happy to answer your question. Yeah. I, I do think that that's part of the procedural process, and it would be akin to voting. So I would say the answer would be no. And I think historically that's been the precedent as well with other um, boards and commissions that have. Um, Ex officio members on them. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and then secondly, um, we had talked about last time kind of just, I mean, I know we're not quite moving to hospitality quite yet, but we will be. Um, we did talk about going one section at a time. So it'll be pretty easy to stop one section and take a break whenever one of those motions is finished talking about. Well, I would remind all of us that were there that when we had the topic of the discussion topic about the age 25, if I'm not mistaken, you suggest you made a suggestion, Kate, and then somebody else made the motion, or you 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 crystallized the discussion that had been occurring and suggested, well, why don't we just, you know, have the age cutoff for 25? And then somebody else made the motion. I, I, I did not make a motion of any kind of that matter. I, I asked to have a conversation about that. Oh. Um, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to other than like, yes, I have an influence on the conversation and oh. I appreciate that opportunity. Okay. Okay. Um, so Brian, did you get your answer? Is there anybody else, members of the board? which would ordinarily be towards the end of the agenda, which is we move things up, we move things around a little bit. Okay, then in that case, let's move on to the hospitality city provisions continued discussion. Um, and then Evan, you kind of did a nice segue there, I thought, but um, that I was gonna, use or utilize, I guess. I would love to hear how we should go about this section of the, of the meeting. Uh, it's obviously a potential for a lot of rabbit holes. So I don't want to, I don't want to promote that, but how, how, how do you propose we, we continue this discussion on these provisions? Obviously a lot of people have been able to make their comments at this point, 
what do we how do we how do we go forward from here tom well um there's a lot of different ways uh, i i don't want to belabor this on how we do it but i mean we could just take a document and put it up on the screen uh share screen and go through it i mean everybody else can people can also keep it on their screen but for those that can't um i believe the, pub the public has access don't they yeah the public doesn't have access to the comments though so okay. i want to remind everybody that we we didn't use comments because they are not available to the, the non-editors so okay brian yeah, I just want to clarify, uh, I share Evan member Anderson's concern that um, what is our goal and sort of going through this document? Is it to revote on each of these single items at one of the spectrum? Is it just to review each other's arguments? Um, I would just want to sort of have a, a common understanding of what our goal here is in the next two hours when working with this document and what our goal is at the end of those two hours to have accomplished. Do you do you want to answer that yourself, Brian? First, but I, I generally have that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kate wants to. Kate's got her hand up. Um, yeah, I think that if I remember correctly from the last meeting, I, I, my understanding was is we were going to go through and like while we were going through this document, if we did have comments that we wanted to leave, we obviously couldn't leave them, but we were going to talk through it in this meeting. So my assumption was is that. What that meant was, is we would go through line by line the motion and talk about the language of the motion, the whether or not, you know, anybody had any concerns about whether the vote was correct or it was adequately like, like prescribed in this document. Um, because remember, this is a summary of the motion. They're not exact language of the motion. And so the hope was, is that we would make sure that the language reflects what we all believe to be true of the motion that was made. Um, I did not think that we were going to be going through it all and talking about each other's responses because I thought that that was just what our opinions were. Um, that was my understanding. If there was a concern about a, a comment being made, I, I, I didn't think that that was what we were getting at with this document. I thought it was the language of the motion and making sure it's clear, making sure that the vote was right and any kind of concerns that we had with, with that kind of thing. Um, that was my understanding of what we were doing with this document today. But. That, that sounds right. And I, I think we kind of agreed that if there was a glaring error that we might ask the person who wrote such a statement, are you sure about that? Yeah. So maybe it won't be so hard to go through. Um, did, how did you feel about sharing screen so the, the public can see the comments? Does anybody have comments that they don't want? The, I mean, it's gonna come out anyways, right? Sandra? I believe that. This document's already been made available to the public. Um, the link to the documents in the I believe the meeting packet. Meeting packet, yeah. Okay. All right. So too late. Or I guess you can change your comments. But okay. Um Caitlin, do you want to uh does that sound okay as a method? Share screen. Yeah. Um, really again, if I mean someone Anyone can read along with it if you don't want to share the screen. I think that sharing the screen would be helpful for so we sharing all are looking at the same thing at the same time. For sure. And then just to clarify, you would like to see the Cloud Hospitality Motions document shared for this for the duration of the discussion. Uh, yeah. Cool. And I have it right here. And then if anyone is looking for it. It is in the Clab reading packet on page. It's on page 23, 24, excuse me. And I'll share it right now.
Okay, hopefully um, everyone can see. One reality is that the reading packet may not have the most recent edits. Uh, uh, Evan, where are we in terms it's, of- It's just the link, Tom. It's not the document itself. So it is the most recent. Correct. Yes. So this right here is open to the actual document where you all have been editing it. Okay, and um, Evan and I and a couple city staff are aware of the fact that Evan was not able to access the document um, until just a while. Well, do you still, now do you have access? Or yeah, no, no Tom, uh, Allison got me access like 15 minutes before the meeting started. So I've copied all of my responses in there and they are all in line with everyone else's. Oh, yeah. I believe well, I'm actually the final comment in each of the, each of the motions. Okay, good. All right, thanks. I just wanted to make sure that your comments were represented. They are. They're in there. Okay. Um, so now that it's okay, even like at the very beginning, it talks about language of the motion for the on the August second, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I think we just need to say what that. I, I couldn't find that anywhere where mobile bring your own was disallowed. Was that a clap motion or is that just something that was already in place? I kind of remember having a motion and voting okay. on it. <clears throat> and I'm assuming that's the correct date. Anyone? Perhaps staff could go back and do some research and see what the motion language was or listen to the tape, the audio tape and come back with that. That would be super helpful. Thanks, Sandra. I think can help with that. And the time frame of that will be between now and next meeting. Or what, what would be that time frame? You can't find it quickly, can you? We could probably figure it out by the end of the week and email it to. Um, I mean, typically we've been working with Allison on this document. We would send our comments to her, but if someone else wants to sub in for Allison and make that change for us, um, since Allison's out of the office, that might be helpful. Tom, I can send it directly to you if you're willing to do that. The, the August, or what, you, just, you could send what directly to me? What we find when we listen to the August hearing as far as the exact language of that motion. Okay, sure. Why don't you could send it to both Brian and I maybe? Sure. Okay. I have a quick question. Tom, it's a, yeah, it's a unanimous vote. So it's not yeah. that consequential to the rest yeah. of the Yeah. Exactly. So, well, and, and um, I guess I would say, I don't know what the time frame is in which you want this document approved, but if you wanted the entire board to look at it and approve what was found, then that would happen at the next meeting. But um, uh, unless this board was okay with whatever was um, found, and since it's a unanimous vote. Um, I guess it, I'm not sure exactly what the take home message of that, but I, I did hear um, Robin that if it's unanimous, I mean, it can be added later, but we'd want to make sure it's accurate. Kate? Yeah, I'm looking at the meeting minutes from the August meeting from 2021, and it says Member Keegan moved, Green seconded, that CLAB would not recommend that the city of Boulder explore mobile hospitality or bringing your own cannabis retail hospitality establishments at this time. Motion passed 7 0 is what the note says, so. Um, yeah. Kate, could you plug that in to that little summary spot there? Yeah, I'm happy to if people are okay with that. I just, I, I don't know. Um, plug it in, because we're all still considering this document. It's still live, everything's okay. under consideration. Thank you. Kate, how do you get, besides listening to the audio, 
I just pulled up the September meeting um, meeting packet and the meeting minutes from the previous meeting is in there. Um, and that is the language that was used um, in the summary of the meeting minutes. Okay. While I was going back through the months of 2021, trying to listen to um, recordings and looking at the minutes, I noticed I, I do not see, am I just missing it? But I don't see any minutes from the November meeting. Let me check on that, Tom, and I'll get right back to you. Okay. It's not that relevant to right here and now in the moment, but. So maybe the subject should be opt out, be in line with the things below it, versus opt in versus opt out, or it doesn't say opt out. How does anybody feel about that? Because it's it's the very first thing. It's... So I just change. Yeah, I can change the language if you want. I can say Clab recommends opting out of mobile hospitality, oh, but. It was more like this one here. It was it said at this time, so I just want to make sure that was captured. Okay. Yeah, well, I've, I just changed it while you were working on the other part. I mean, if we're talking format, do you want them all to say "Clab recommends" um, so that it's consistent, and then that way it would be... um, well, in the in the subject. This is in the subject line. I'm talking about in the motion. Right. That was what you were working on. I'm talking about the subject line. Okay. While she's working on that, does anybody have any other concerns about anything on that first page? Um, I see that there was um, this motion for the opt in to retail hospitality and sales does say at the end of the motion, the license would be governed by city laws applicable to all of their mar marijuana businesses. Um, and we may just want to clean up that language since we do have further recommendations. And I saw that in the, in the comment you, that was made. What would you propose? Okay. I was just reflecting the um, the comment that was made about um, um, to opt into the state, opt into cannabis hospitality and sales establishment establishments, but the license would be governed by city laws um, would be removed. Um, unless we want to say that the license would be governed by city laws applicable to other businesses, except oh. as, as defined by, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, the, the, the one piece was just that on, it's applicable moment. to all other businesses as well as that's all I was 
Okay, Let's hold see. on one moment, Alana. Is somebody let Alana back? Alana got out and now she's coming back in. <coughs> Are you here? Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Sorry, Kate, I was paying attention. Alana got cast out and now she's back. So I missed what you said, sorry. There, it's actually Alana's comment about the opt-in to retail hospitality and sales about whether or not it should be so it says CLAB recommends the Boulder City Council that marijuana provisions of the Boulder Revised Code be amended for the city to opt in to the state law to allow marijuana consumption businesses. It's not consumption businesses, it's hospitality um, and sales establishments. So the language, just to be clear that, that we're talking about hospitality and sales, not about mobile or bring your own. Um, and then that last sentence, it says that it'll be governed by all of the businesses, but there are edits that we're making to it and we're making more restrictions or, and so that, that, like, that piece of language was just a little bit um, confusing. And it looks like I've been suggested that we could just delete um, the last those part. last, yeah. And as you can see um, on the screen, it's not viewed as deleted. So just an FYI. Hmm, yeah, uh, see what you Okay. Yeah, what I suggested there is that the license would be governed by city laws. Uh, it's a little weird to say applicable to all other marijuana businesses because there's several motions further down this document that treat um, uh, hospitality businesses different than other marijuana businesses. So if we just got rid of applicable to all other marijuana businesses, I think the license would be governed by city laws. We're going to pass laws to regulate the whole part of it or the whole bit of it, but it's not gonna be the exact same as other marijuana businesses. So I think if we strike that last from applicable to businesses, we get to the intent of what we were going for there or what you guys were going for. I wasn't even part of it, so. I was gonna ask Sandra if, if there was language that we could use because the license would be governed by city laws applicable to all other marijuana businesses, except specific ones we make to hospitality, right? I mean, I do think that is important to say, because I do think the, the intent of the motion was to have it abide by other marijuana business laws. Um, so I think that the- yeah. yeah. Well, if we could just take one step back, I'm sorry, because I'm just stepping in here. So I'm not sure where you guys are with this document, but if this document is intended to go to council in terms of your recommendations, um, I think if you're going to be changing the motion language, like the heading motion to me would indicate the actual motion that was made. If it if you're going back and changing them, um, just for clarity's sake, that, that's fine. But I would maybe in the heading say something like motion summarized or something like that. So it doesn't um, sort of, give the perception that that was the actual motion that was voted on. And then your other question I had to do with the licensing, license would be governed by city laws applicable to all other marijuana businesses. Um, I mean, that seems like a given, but if that's not the case, like if it's the case in some, but not others, then you would wanna address that in every single motion. Um, but I don't know, like, does it apply? It was the intent that it would be applied to every one of these different issues. I lost you, I lost the, basis, I lost your direction of that question. I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Okay, do you want to ask the question again? Or, I, I mean, I can try and answer it again. I just, I'm not sure if I'm answering the right question. I'm sorry. I just want to clarify that this isn't the motion language. So yeah, the summary is way more appropriate because none of these are the actual motion language, even the earlier part of this. So 
I think that that update makes it better. Should we say summary of motion just to even make it more rhetorically correct? Um, and I was just like on the same topic kind of thinking since we do have other of these items, may, you know, like that come back to what Kate was asking Sandra about, you know, the marijuana business laws. Should we just say something along the lines of pending other recommendations and then like when those happen we can actually reference them there you know what I mean like if there's like Evan said there's other ones that are more specific down the list so maybe just saying uh, you know as we are just making recommendations to council anyway some language saying you know current laws pending further recommendations from this board see below or I don't know something like that or you could even say that the license would be governed by applicable city laws. I don't know if that covers it or not. But I think there's been some discussion of, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe making some amendments that would be specific to these hospitality places that wouldn't necessarily apply to other marijuana businesses that currently exist. Did. <clears throat> Allison is the one who put this whole thing together, correct? Is that is that right, yeah. or was that set, was that staff? If it, it was, was Allison, it, in then, conjunction with each other. Yeah, can right, we, Kristen? Yeah, so Reba Ward from the city attorney's office um, put together this summary, the motion summary, and these are literally, I think, copy and pasted from all of our minutes, which were approved, you know, by the board. So that's where the, the motions came from. And then I think Allison um, took that summary document and created a more extensive memo for providing each of you an opportunity to comment on that. So it was a partnership between staff and Allison. Cool. I mean, do we have to make a motion to say, does anybody have an issue with just leaving it as, it's, as it is? I don't think so. I do, I do think that the clarification of marijuana, like it should say hospitality and sales businesses I agree. instead of consumption, because that's not accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would edit sales. it. Go for it, Kate. It's, this is a so, collaborative document. I, I have no problem. I, with I'm it. not changing anything without everyone's approval. It's <laughs> a fact. We've got the ex officio, uh, I don't know, whatever. Don't want to get too involved in terms. If Allison wrote it, then you can change it. Yeah. Boom. Going back to what I asked earlier, while we're working on that one, does anybody have concerns also of what, what's on this page? I do, um, I do want to mention, well, I'm trying to, so Brian, you made the motion. You were getting tired of making the motions in that October meeting, if you remember. It's like, why do I have to make all the motions? You didn't say it that way. But, uh, and I thought you did an admirable job, actually. But I kind of remember in the flower motion, or at least the dis certainly the discussion, but the flower motion um, had something about if ventilate, because it, we had a discussion and we, many of us said, well, it kind of ties, us, ties into ventilation. Um, and it was something along the line, Brian, of if ventilation problems can be addressed or solved or, um, do you remember anything like that? Isn't that the motion on May 2nd? With, uh, let's see, hold on. Way too many windows open. Yeah, it's the Clean Indoor Air Act motion specifically sought to address that. I mean, I agree with Tom that they were parallel concerns. It would seem out of character for me to sort of create a double barreled motion like that that has two matters in it. But um, I, I agree that they are shared concerns. I, um, think you, I, I like simple motions. Um, I'm trying to remember in your 
in your comments here, that's that's when I was reminded actually when I was reading your comments if I'm Yeah, you're I mean I'm I'm jumping the gun to page whatever that is, three, four. Um, um, that, Chair, respectfully, yeah. it would be so helpful if we can go through this in an organized manner, kind of from thing to thing to thing. It, no, you're no, talking to page four and... No, I'm, but I'm concerned as to whether the motion actually, the, the summary of the motion um, is completely accurate. Or what which motion are you talking about? The motion about? from the minutes. Would you like me to read it from the minutes? I, I have the minutes right in front of me, but minutes are brief usually. I, I listened to the, the discussion last night um, for several hours. I was in and out because I had to leave my office because I had really bad reception. Can you just fill me in on what we're up to? And we're on page one. And I was just asking at the bottom of page one where it talks about marijuana flower, which passed four to three. Um, I'm, I hear what Brian's saying that he doubts that he would have made a motion that has something contingent on something, uh, but I kind of remember it being that flower would be approved if the ventilation problems can be solved. And I, yes, I do know that the, it's down below in the May discussion also. I mean, I... So I mean, what you're suggesting is that we would need to go and re-listen to each one of these if you have a different recollection, which is certainly, yeah. I don't know, that's the best use of our time right now. I would just, as the motion is written, following the same process by which these other motions were extracted, I think we should just proceed. And maybe if you have a different recollection, we can comment that out and we can revisit that offline. Okay, well, I'm reading the May one. I guess I'm content with that. What do you mean the May one? And can you what can you just tell me what well, this is what Robin just complained about jumping to another page. It's on May 5, 2, 22, uh, the, there was a motion that is summarized about the Clean Indoor Air Act. So yeah, I'll recommend you. that we we come to that when we get to that. So yeah. if we're done with okay. page one, let's move to page two. Yes. Are people okay with me changing where it says marijuana consumption businesses to the marijuana hospitality and sales businesses? Yes, yes, definitely. I think is that uh, across the board? Does everybody agree that that's a since those are our, the only business types that we're allowing? Can you see our thumbs up. Recommending. Cool. Great. Now, Kristen, uh, briefly, and also given the fact that. It's almost five o'clock. I saw you on briefly with your hand up. And did you want to say something? Kristen just messaged me that she stepped away for just a second. So um, she what? <laughs> she stepped away for just a second. Oh, okay. Well, this might be a really good time to have a, a, a 10 minute break. How's that sound? Works Anyone for opposed me? to that? All right, it's 4.57. Uh, Caitlin, start the timer. We'll come back at 5.07. Hey, Tom, should we be prepared to be, are we going through this document, the entire document? I don't think we're going to make it through, but the key, the key part is the first part, because after that, it's people's comments. Um, okay, so we're going to align on the motion summary language. Yeah, as the item. Yes, I you. think Kate suggested. Kate, did I capture that? Yeah, I think the, the goal was to make sure that we're all agreeing well, yeah, I on didn't, the, I wasn't the, serious, <laughs> Chris. Okay. <laughs> four, four, five, five, oh, seven. Okay, see you soon. Got it.
I'm back, but I'm going to turn my video off so I can still finish eating here without you having to watch. <laughs> Thank you. I was just during the 10 minutes, I was listening to the October minutes segment. Um, there was actually, a, there was some discussion about, are we referring to hemp also? Um, that makes things confusing. Tom, in what context were we referring to hemp? Um, well, we were actually trying to crystallize the motion language for the bottom one on the page one for, about the flower discussion. Oh, oh. Huh. And I know Kate's, Kate can say she didn't say it, but I was just listening to you, Kate. <laughs> kind of. I didn't say that I didn't say anything. I know, I'm just kidding with you. Come on. Are you? If you can't have fun at this chair thing sometimes, then why do it? Our audio really is not good sometimes. But, oh well. Okay. Um, so we're on page two, right? Yeah, so again, our task is we're on page two to review the motion summaries to ensure it, it is an summaries accurate of, summary. Summaries of motions. Anybody change that? I can change it. Um, I did have a question that I wanted to ask everyone. Go ahead. Go, Kate. Go. Um, I was hoping that we could add numbers to these because um, the the bullet point thing and the like trying to refer to which ones we're referring to is is really going to be very hard to reference. That's kind of nice. Do you think there's not enough room on this table? But if there were, or maybe we could just put it in. Um... Hey Brian, I mean, just before you do that, all I mean, we might be adding some might. Might we not? Where what? I thought I heard discussion about adding. Oh, oh, we already did that. I see. Um, sorry. Just Could we just call it like a new column reference number or something like that? Well, what we could we could put it under. Um... I mean, Brian's already Brian's putting it in the subject. If everybody um, can see the oh. on page one, um, he was putting motion zero one, motion zero two. Um, if people are open to that, that could be oh, an easy okay. way to do it. And then I would say we should try to do that um, when we get to the bottom, that they should be the, the same once the correspondence. Document, once the document is finished, then we might, like maybe even in the box where it says vote, we could, we could list the pages where the comments are for that motion. How's that sound? If you wanted to make it really helpful, you could even hyperlink to the discussion. I think we heard that we can't, we couldn't do that for some reason. But. I think if we, if you make the motions each a subheader, you can easily link to subheaders in the document. It's super easy. I can easily do that um, if people we want can't, to do that at once. I think we can't link out of this document, but we can certainly hyperlink inside of it to just jump to the segment. Right, just to the the discussion that's later right. in the document, yeah. That works too. I, I imagine if Brian, co or if Brian puts this in the way it looks like he's about to, the document will probably figure it out on its own because it's already set up as a, uh, a outline format. So if you put headers in there, it'll probably pop up on the left side. Oh, sorry, a lot of people said what I was going to do, but I didn't know what I was going to do. So you want me to make headers for each of the summary motions so that there's a table of contents? 
Yeah, I'm going to see something real quick and see if this does it. Yeah, making the motion is the header. We'll do it. If you just use the drop down where it says normal text, highlight motion one, right? I can highlight that. Uh, yeah, instead yeah, there of normal you go. Text, that's I, do, what, that's what do. I can do header three. Perfect. And, and then we can just Way use go, header Kate. three as that. <laughs> This is my life. I do this all the time. <laughs> I do better in the spreadsheets. <laughs> we don't have to wait on me to do this. Okay, so, so let's go on to page two. Uh, I think you all may. May know I have I have something to bring up here. Obviously, I already brought it up once, but I want to bring it up again. And I have language written. I'm not really sure. I, I know we're supposed to be presenting motions with language. I have the language. I don't know how you would like me to present it. I can certainly we, copy it in here. Are you discussing motions before we before one makes a motion would be ideal? But what are you thinking? Uh, in regards to this, I th I just think that we need to give an opportunity to differentiate between dabbing and high high milligram consumption versus the lowest milligram consumption per, per draw, which is vape pens. I think the reality is that most, I actually just verified with a friend of mine who works for BDSA, the analytics company that's based out of, based out of Boulder actually, right over in, in Gun Barrel. Uh, but they are, they are national national clearinghouse for data in this industry essentially and we're we're talking about the second most common consumption method is the non-combustion method is vaporization and i understand what stacy said earlier and that there is still very very high potency material inside of vape pens but i think that to lump vape pens and to Robin's point earlier, there is two classifications when it comes to potency testing and how you deal with getting certified. Yes, they are both marijuana concentrates from uh, raw material, like raw dabbing material versus controlled release vaporizer pens, but we have to get them tested separately for a good reason. And on average, when we're talking about a normal vape pen, they have somewhere between 150 and 200 draws in a half a milli or in a half a so essentially what you end up with is an average of around two milligrams to three milligrams per draw. The average flower bowl is about 10 times that many milligrams. The average dab is three times that many milligrams. So to group that together is dangerous because they're not even remotely the same thing. I think the, the vast majority of vaporizer pen users are not even remotely interested in dabbing, and many of them are not even interested in combusting flour at all. We're eliminating a third of our potential market, and perhaps even more. The, the social licensing of vaporizing is much, much higher. I mean, walk into the Boulder Theater or the Fox on any night, and they will stop you from smoking weed and talk to you while you hit your vape pen in front of them. It's not it is not, a, it's not a, we know that it's happening already. And the reality is that by providing some venue for people to consume in the way that they choose to, when that method is not combustion, I think we should, I think we should allow it. And I think it's a, it's a reasonable, a reasonable thing for us to consider when it's the method of consumption or the choice, the chosen method of consumption for a huge percentage of our potential customers. The reality is we have to make this business a business because if we don't, then they're not going to be around for very long and most of us will have wasted our time having this conversation. So I strongly advocate that we, we take up the conversation of differentiating dabbable material from vaporizer pens because they are very, very different. So I have language for a proposal there. I don't know where to show it to you guys, but anything Tom yeah you there I just realized I'm, I've been talking this whole time and I'm on you <laughs> oops I, I, I did an Evan just kidding 
Um, so um, I was going to call on Robin because I saw her hand go up while you were talking, and then I was going to respond to what you said, if that's okay. Certainly. Yeah, um, thanks for that input, Evan. I'm willing to look at any motion. I will just say, though, hearkening back to the conversation around this particular motion, motion number five, marijuana concentrates, that it was a thoughtful and in-depth conversation. And we decided at that point not to talk about delivery systems because it's a different conversation. We went with the state definition of marijuana concentrates as what we looked at in this particular motion. If you want to bring a different motion, and I think that's what you're suggesting, that's fine, but I just hope that you can see and understand why we honed in on marijuana concentrates specifically as what we were debating in that motion. And for a variety of reasons, the, the vote went the way that it did. Stacy touched on a lot of those earlier. And correct me if I'm wrong, but flour can be um, consumed in many different Modes. It can, but the 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 vast vast majority of vaporizers are full of a concentrate at this point and not a flower. That's a it's a that existed for a time, Tom. But it is really I don't I don't even know of any stores that sell flower vaporizers anymore at this point. Okay, Stacy. Um, I think. Robin is making a really important point that we are going with the state definition, but I also hear what Evan's saying because the reality is that he's right that this is, or vape pens with concentrate material are the most popular. However, we're not, from what I'm understanding so far, the way we want this to look, going to allow people to bring their own personal devices into the facilities to be using them. So theoretically speaking, someone could walk, like let's say you're a vape pen or somebody is a vape pen user all the time and they walk into one of these places. Do you think they're not gonna want to smoke flour just because they can't use their vape pen? And like, and if so, do you really see that as a major challenge to the effective management of, or like business of the, hospitality places because I kind of see people who use vape pens and from at least my professional experience and personal experience talking to a lot of people the reality is most people like them because they don't have an odor so like your example of in the Fox theater you know the reason they probably are overlooked it's just more subtle it's not like when people smoke you know smoke a joint where it's like this giant cloud of smoke you can't miss it so I think a lot of people choose them because they're more subtle they could do it without having to like stink up the entire place where they are they could do it without having to smell like it maybe when they go back to whatever they were doing so these places would be establishments where you can use cannabis so a lot of those issues wouldn't necessarily be there and i'd like to think that some of these vape pen users might walk in try smoking flour if that's what they're doing there anyway and actually revisit the idea that maybe that's an acceptable form of cannabis usage despite the social trend towards all these concentrate and vape pens and whatnot i, I mean that's maybe part of my medical opinion coming in there. And I do worry about these types of materials a lot. So I, I mean, that's certainly coming through and at least the way I'm looking at this and voting on some of these items, but I, I don't, I guess I'm just curious if you think that's like a major impediment to these businesses functioning if- Absolutely. You do. It's, it's, a, it's an absolutely critical piece of these businesses functioning. The, the reality is that uh, it is not socially acceptable. And even though we want to believe that it is here, it is still not socially acceptable to blow a cloud of smoke in somebody's face inside of a business. It's just not. Well, no, but it is, absolutely, it is absolutely acceptable in this community right now in many, many settings to politely hit a vape pen while you're sitting there having a cup of coffee. But that, this that is the truth. Be a standard public setting, right? This would be like, I don't know if you ever were in Amsterdam during the era of coffee shops, but that's like <laughs> in my mind heavily when I'm picturing these things, right? And in that, yeah. those, they didn't have any special air filtration. Some of them were kind of smoky, but 
you know, people were sitting there smoking joints primarily. I don't, I mean, okay, this was like a really, really long time ago that I was there. So I can't say I remember all the devices people were using, but, you know, this was in the era before all of those things came onto the market. So I'd like to think that people would walk into these places. I have to imagine at least this is, I'm not an industry person, so maybe my opinion's not as valid on this, but I would imagine most people would be happy to go smoke a joint in one of these hospitality places, even if they're a regular vape pen user. Maybe there is a subset of people who really truly believe they're like doing their health a service by avoiding smoking flour as opposed to, you know, and like using vaporizer devices. Maybe one day we'll find out they're right. Maybe we're going to find out they're completely wrong. The point is we don't know. And I think that was why we voted the way we did when we did on this, or some of us anyway, I can speak for my own vote. I hear you. And I, I understand this vote. I, I did I did my research on what you guys voted on. I totally understand. And I, I actually slightly revisited the language I would like to propose as a motion, because I think the what Robin said is absolutely true. That is, marijuana concentrates are a category and it has a reasonable definition. I think what I would like to propose is, is an exclusion or an exemption for a delivery, a specific delivery method inside of these establishments. We can ban all concentrates, but for the marijuana vaporizers exempted in that. <laughs> I, I promise my language is better than that. When I can show it to you, you'll see. <laughs> Glad recommends that electronically powered marijuana vaporizers be an exempted delivery method in hospitality establishments. If, if we're dialoguing on this, is it okay, Tom, for me to speak up? Um, yeah, I would like to. Because what I would say, Evan, is that, um, uh, and I want you to get right back to your motion, so don't, I don't wanna take up too much time, but you know, there are impacts to the other votes. Once we, once we as a group said, marijuana concentrates as defined by the state are not going to be included in this roundup of what would be allowed. Then you had people considering things like impaired driving, for instance. And if you exempted a delivery device to include a marijuana concentrate, that may change how people feel about how they voted on some of the impaired driving things because they might have a greater concern. I mean, it could it impact it could impact a lot of emotions around. I mean, are you talking about would would your desire be to create a motion twenty? Yes. And oh, um, before I call on Stacy, can you read what you just said before what what you were intending? The motion to read. I mean, I, you say it is motion 20. I have the language written. I might as well present you guys with that. Um, you want to send it also to um, Caitlin, maybe? And then at some point in time later, we can put it up on the screen. I mean, I can put it up on the screen for you right now. I have control over the document that she's looking at. Would it be well, preferred I'm, if I'm, I just put it on the screen? I heard at least one person complain that we weren't going in order. Um, I understand that, but if we want to show the language of it, I can just show you on the screen right now what it would be. If we want to say that it's motion 20, then let's scroll to motion 20. And I'll see Stacy, your hands. Let me see what Stacy has to say and on Alana also. I just wanted to clarify something that Evan had said earlier as far as the dosing, because I had brought that up before. Um, you had compared, you know, somebody smoking an entire bowl to using these vape pens and maybe taking a hit. I don't think that's a fair comparison. So I think we would have to do one hit off a bowl or joint to one hit off a vape pen. Now my experience professionally is the people who are inclined to smoke an entire bowl are the same people who are inclined to suck down the cartridges in those vape pens in like an ungodly amount of time. So I, I think 
we need to stay consistent if we're talking about dosing language because one hit off, you know, whether it's this vape pen with a concentrate in it, one hit off a joint or a bowl, those would be where we want to compare. Yeah. Not a whole bowl smoked or a whole joint smoked to, to a, you know, a, a couple hits off a vape pen. Now, you know, there's also a lot of other information that I know in our retreat. Um, I remember Michael was saying he doesn't know a lot about this stuff, but the vape pen material, like the concentrate material also has a faster, like faster or higher peak. And it does maybe wear off a little bit faster, but that seems at least anecdotally speaking to be very user dependent on that person's, like if they're a heavy user versus a light user, et cetera. So I, I think we just should keep it consistent for now. Like if we're talking about dosing, like one hit off whatever our you know device or uh, vehicle is rather than saying, yeah, if you smoke the whole thing, it's more I think that's it's I think that with there okay so there's a reason why we have equivalencies there's a reason why you have only a limitation of two grams and a half a gram of concentrate just for simple math for everybody to hear right now we have a lot of strains that are 30 percent you're allowed to buy two grams of flour if you consume the entirety of what you're allowed to purchase during one visit you have just consumed 600 milligrams of concentrate or 600 milligrams of THC Concentrates are limited at a half a gram in the exact same sales setting. So to assume that you could exceed, I mean, that's over unity. The, the maximum concentrate, even if it's 95%, is still only 475, 490 milligrams. Are, so are we, about, like, we already about have equivalencies. Right? The, state, the state has provided the equivalencies. So right, that's for purchasing if I am not. It is, it is. So but if we're, we're going to that here we're talking about like people sitting in a hospitality social club and using it and so then it's more dosing like literally like per dose like if I had a patient in front of me doing a study and I wanted to compare in you know, the effects of a concentrate versus the effects of flour dose for dose it doesn't matter what the state limited and how they got there is it's like literally like how much does their blood level go up from using one hit off whatever mechanism. So it, it's just, it gets really confusing, I think. And I understand what you're saying as far as the purchase allowances, but I don't really think that pertains to this particular discussion. I mean, maybe it would be useful to have someone like Cinnamon come back and talk to us about that kind of stuff and educate us all more. But I, I think that we, for this discussion of hospitality establishments need to be consistent in our comparisons like dosing wise and i think we is isn't the point I voted of, that. if we if we're voting to limit concentrates from being allowed then we are making a call to protect the patron yeah if we're making that call we've already chosen what their limit of i mean you're not allowed to buy too much alcohol or, well unfortunately you are that is up to the decision of the it is up to the decision of the bartender how much you're allowed to drink. But in this setting, we are already putting a cap on people. Why do we need to put an additional cap? We are putting a cap of 450 milligrams, roughly, with a half a gram of concentrate being the limit that they can purchase. We're allowing 600, 650, 700 milligrams of flour to be sold to somebody. We're already protecting them. We should allow them to make their own choice about their delivery method. My call. My vote. That's that's my position on this. You obviously disagree, and I respect your opinion enormously. You are a doctor. I recognize that, but I, I also know that this is we have to vote. We have to vote to support the industry. If I would like to, and I think that this this prohibition is a big one. It really changes the it changes the face of hospitality in a huge way. It turns it into the thing that we don't want it to be, which is the the grungy joints and the, the dirty cafes in Amsterdam. That is not what this needs to be if we have any expectation that it's gonna be successful. I, I think that one of the things that we did talk about during that meeting was we're just opening, like theoretically, opening the doors, right? This isn't like permanent, never allow this or that. 
it's just to get the ball rolling if city council decides to go forward with it anyway, right? And I think the idea was given, especially right now, the highly contentious nature of marijuana concentrates on in many regards, right? And it's very political, as you know. The idea was, well, let's start with something less contentious, less political, see how things go, and we can always make changes later. I don't think this was, at least this is my understanding, wasn't intended as a like, we're never going to allow this or that. There'll never be vape pens. It's going to be a dirty facility. I think there's ways that we've been talking about subsequent to this motion five about indoor air quality, what would be required with venting and all that kind of stuff that pertains to your concerns about turning it into a grungy place. Hopefully nothing would ever be like Amsterdam, because as I'm sure anyone who was there can attest, there are a lot of other caveats to that city that fortunately don't apply here in Boulder. I just wanted to share that it always really, really surprised me when I remember that we're talking about 25 year olds in this conversation. It's I remember at the beginning of the board, I remember Robin saying, and please, I'm not trying to quote you. I, I'm, I might get this wrong, but I remember you saying to like cannabis people, we're not trying to take away access for legal adults. And we're talking about vape pens, the most ubiquitous thing for 25 and up. And I just want to share my continued surprise that we are regulating the use of the most popular product for over a decade in Colorado among responsible adults and um, and prohibiting a product for 25 year olds and up. Um, just, I hope that, I hope everybody really reflects on, on what 18 to 25 year olds are allowed to do otherwise and how this really comes across to a broad section of our community. Right. I just wanted to echo and agree with uh, some of the things that Member Green had said that I think my uh, motivation here is to one, create a policy environment where we can show that we're doing things slowly responsibly. I think one of the first things that we you teach anyone who's uh, trying to a first time consumer of cannabis is, you know, always this go low, go slow. And so, and by that same sort of logic, you know, that's the way that I'm approaching uh, my votes here uh, to proceed with hospitality is that I think there's really exciting things in the product space of concentrates. I think there are really exciting things to be done with edibles uh, in a hospitality setting, but at the same time, they have different kinds of risk profiles that suggest that, you know, those are decisions that should be revisited uh, after we really get our footing beneath us by using just more conventional well understood uh, kinds of products. And so to say that uh, we're never going to do under 25 or that we're never going to do concentrates is certainly not the intent of my votes. Um, I think those should be decisions that we continue to revisit and, and made and uh, should be revisited. Uh, but I'd say for an opening bid uh, for creating a policy environment for hospitality, uh, my motivation continues to be that we should do conventional forms of consumption using well understood kinds of products and, and routes of administration. Uh, and then at, until regulators, us, as well as licensees, I really understand like how this is going to work, what the market is like, uh, and then we can begin to sort of think about changing some of these other kinds of policy considerations. Let me, um, I don't know how to go, go other than to go back to the document and then when it's time to make your motion, Evan, when we get down to number 20 or 19. Well, I, I, I will at least let you know that I cut my motions in half. I've decided to eliminate two that I really wanted to bring, but right now they are already in the document as motion 20 and 21. So I've had my piece. I, I believe we should be voting on that motion when we get to it. And I have the language in here for you guys to review. It's in motion 20 and then motion 21 is the other one, but we'll get there shortly. 
Uh, so I see, where did you put it? Page five in the table. Yeah, it's, I put it in the table. Maybe I need to refresh, I guess, because it, it's below there. the yellow highlighted. No, okay, now, okay, when I scrolled down and then I scrolled back up, then it was there. Hmm. Okay, At first it wasn't, then when I, okay, got it. All right, can we go back up to, to try to make it through some of this, more, some more of this, I should say? Yeah. Uh, motion five. That's what we just discussed. I know, but is there anything, as this is written here right now, what was voted on, as Sandra might remind us. Brian, your hand is up. Is it still up from before? Is it? No. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, are we good there? As it was voted? I mean, I'll just ask Member Malone at this stage that as a document that's going to go for City Council, there's a note here that Malone recused. I don't know if you'd want to change the language here or no, I think in some other kind of way. The record, and I'll add my notes if um, we're allowed to after the meeting. Yeah, I, I fully anticipate that people can still add things. Say regretfully recuse. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, motion six. Any concerns? Something I was thinking, but okay, go on. Yep, yeah, six. I have no issue. With I know six. what I was thinking. Should we have um, the top the topic headings or the the box headings on the top of each page too. The subject, summaries of motions, et cetera. To try to make it easy. Maybe, to, I don't know if we want to do that now. I mean, I, my only thing yeah. is that if we add Brian, something- Brian's already, Brian's already on it. Yeah. Or somebody was. Things could shift, so. Yeah, if you put it in as a header, you can, or as a yeah as a header or a footer, we can do it, but it'll be not yet. Okay, all right, hold off on that then. Before you, uh, okay, six as Kate said. Hearing none. Number seven. Seven. Okay, you beat me to it. Seven. Six. Just trying to move us along, that's all. I'm a little confused by this one. And I, I, like, I'm not, I don't think there's a, a way to change this, but can somebody clarify what's exactly going on here? Not intended for liquid consumption shall be one of the permitted types of products allowed. So Just not liquid. That liquid. Is, we're not allowed to have drinks, I don't think. No drinks. Okay. Well, Drake's is motion eight, so we just separated out edibles as both oh, being solids and liquids. So seven is solids, eight is liquids. Both are edibles. So you're Maybe. not allowed to have gummies, but you can have sodas. Is that what we're saying? That's seven and eight, yes. Yes. That's what was voted. I do, uh, I mean, uh, this is not a motion I'm going to bring up again. I got no dog in this fight. I don't I don't consume edibles in any capacity. <laughs> but uh, gummies make up like half of the edible market. They are absolutely the preferred method of consumption. Drinks is a very, very small piece of the consumption market. Uh, I, I, Onset is no faster one way or the other. Trust me. That's uh, the, the delivery method inside of your salivary glands is just as fast as drinking. It's actually faster if you dissolve it in your mouth than it is putting it into your belly. So I, I just don't understand what the logic was in this one. Uh, why do we want to prohibit gummies? Can somebody speak to that? My recall, uh, am I mute or no? Yeah, my recall uh, is that before we heard somebody, somebody said that um, there's some new things in development or maybe already available that have quicker onset and 
and shorter durations. But our biggest concern from what I recall from the discussion was we were worried about people um, doing edibles and then having a delayed effect while they're driving home. Stacey? But there's nothing to support the idea that a, a drink is activated any faster. That That's just not true, I promise. When Definitely. I I think clinically they are seen as a faster onset. Like it, again, I'm speaking medically, not recreationally, although I think we can probably make the extension that the liquids, the drinks are absorbed faster. At least again, it's probably anecdotal because we don't really have great research on these things. But I think what Tom was just saying, if my memory serves, was part of our discussion that if you know somebody takes a uh, edible of say 10 milligrams, the serving size that is for sale, that very well may not take effect in, in a significant way until after they potentially have left the establishment and would maybe be behind the wheel of a car, walking into a bar and then mixing alcohol with it. Um, I hear what you're saying as far as sales are concerned from dispensaries. But again, I think we want to try and keep these separate because I definitely know a lot about what people are buying medically from dispensaries and I guess recreationally too. And you're right, there is a huge market for these uh, solid forms of edibles, gummies or whatever. But I think a lot of that usage, the intent of it would not pertain to a social club hospitality environment. A lot of people use it for sleep. They use it for other, you know, not approved by the state of Colorado medical type conditions. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing this at all, Stacey. I think we should. No, the no. only thing I would bring up is sublinguals. If we want to, if the theory was let's promote the thing that goes faster, I totally agree with that. Edibles, if you chew an edible and swallow it right to your gut, it can be very, very slow. But if you dissolve a sugary candy in your lip, it goes really fast. You're right. And what I would recommend is that perhaps we make a statement supporting sublingual delivery methods because that is the fastest possible way that could behind be suppositories possible. sublingual is the fastest so <laughs> <laughs> well like hopefully that's not going to come up in the hospitality <laughs> but, um i i think i know you're not arguing i'm just trying to explain what i recall as some of the logic behind at least some of our voting on that specific motion, but I hear what you're saying, and maybe we do need another motion about sublingual specifically, because I don't remember, maybe somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that we actually talked about that type of product. I don't recall us bringing that up anywhere. Where would you put it, or would you put it totally independent of the other two? Maybe independent. Yeah, I think it's independent. Yeah, I think it's just an additional category. I mean, we're talking about marijuana edibles, but then differentiating beverages and edibles. I think we can add sublinguals and say that the sublingual is is the fastest. I mean, the dissolved strips or tincture. And I think the other plus side to that is generally speaking, they're pretty low dose THC. So like if you have somebody coming from, I shouldn't stereotype, but Kentucky, as a first time cannabis user, that could be a nice option for a low dose introduction. Uh, introduction. So I think it's a yeah. good thought. While we're at it, is there anything else on the horizon? But I see Kate's hand up too. Uh, I was just gonna say that, that um, just to differentiate, just uh, to, I, to, I know we did talk about sublingos. We didn't pursue a motion on that, but that was part of the conversation. And the beverages piece, we did specifically say with the, the definition of liquid um, edible products, we used that definition from the state. And what we wanted to do was say we, we were okay with beverages, but not food-based things like oils and peanut butters and those kinds of things. I know we made a distinction about those two things, which is why you see liquid above, right? Edibles not intended for liquid and then beverages. We didn't come back to tinctures at all. Um, I do also... I want to make a, a suggestion 
that clarifications I think we should consider in this part, but I do think we should try to get through the motions that are already here before we start talking about new motions that we want to make. I know that we're trying to do clarifications, but I think it would be really great if we could get through what this document has before we start adding. Um, I do think it, uh, uh, like state, stating that we should talk about tinctures, great, but let's not have that necessarily that conversation now. Um, right. Obviously, you guys can, you all can do what you what you want to do. I'm just suggesting that maybe we get through the 17 motions that we have here, make sure the language is good for the ones that were voted on, and then we can move into potentially adding more to it. I think that we really could get through this document, at least from the motions perspective today, and that would be awesome. Okay. How are tinctures consumed, Kate? Sublingually. Oh, okay. All right. So it's the same as, okay. So I go back to my question. I agree with you. Let's do that. Are there any other things that are on the horizon or maybe already like nasal, um, nasal sprays? I'm assuming there's no uh, eye drops. Uh, Rectal suppositories. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else I'm not aware of? We didn't talk about transdermals. We didn't talk about a lot of the audited products, which involve inhalers and different kinds of things. I, I think that yes, there are nasal sprays that are, are 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 being that are part of audited products. So yes, there are other product categories that we did not address. Okay, we'll leave those for the the motion the twenty motions in the twenty numbers. All right, so we are on seven, I believe. Yeah, we're coming out of seven and eight. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, number nine. Nine is purely a style thing. We should just make sure the capitalization for retail marijuana hospitality sales establishments is capitalized and the other ones aren't. But it's a silly superficial style thing. Do you want me to do that for the rest? But I changed because I did not do that. To say, oh. I would just make them all lowercase unless there's a read, yeah. In, in preparing for this meeting, I looked at the um, a little bit about the hospitality suites in Hollywood, and I saw a um, a billboard, they're like huge, you know, one of those huge bill roadside billboards for one of the hospitality suites. It was kind of interesting. Um, didn't have a whole lot of health education on that billboard. Number 10. Is that vote correct on number 10? Was it 6 0 or 7 0? I, I mean, I can check the vote from the notes, but I would say if it was no probably, uh, it was probably six because I wasn't in the meeting on November 1st. Oh. I was dealing with a sick kid. So that's why I will be not recognized on any of these. 2021, though. Yes. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I think that was before your. Yeah, that's before my time. This is where the, the, the minute I'm still wondering about the, uh, well, the, no, the, the recording's there for November 2021, but not the minutes now. You can find the minutes always in the next month's meeting packet. Uh, it says um, six to zero for the. Um, is this where we went two months? Six without? to zero on the num motion number ten. Did we go two months without minutes? Is that the time? We may have skipped a meeting. I in there that december meeting 21 may have been skipped yeah because i'm not finding minutes from november december or january 
like I, I've already looked at November meeting minutes and December meeting minutes. Hmm. On the okay. city of Boulder website. Really, because I'm in there. So the motion passed six to zero. I think Christy was absent potentially. Oh, okay. All right, number, where are we on, 11? No, 10. No, we're on, well, I mean, six is, six is zero is 10. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's off my page now, so. <laughs> that was 10, okay, all right. Oh, then motion 11. Um, I did want to, um, I mean, obviously this is not me, so Alana, you can speak to it, but, but, um, Alana left the meeting. She didn't ex excuse, I mean, yeah, this wasn't a recusal. You're right. Yeah, it's it just the end of the meeting. I left at 6 PM and then, uh, member Noble moved member green seconded and Keegan abstained. How would so, you like, how would you like it to be represented? Um, delete it. I, I just know we never um, say when people are absent in any yeah, of the vote. We, we didn't say when there was an absent on the one before that. So. Yeah, that works. So do we count my abstention as a pro? Yeah, it goes to the prevailing. Okay. Okay. So uh, any concerns on 11 other than that? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> massive, massive concerns with that. <laughs> I well, wish well, that I had been able to participate in that vote. I think we are doing a massive disservice by doing this. I think that we are defining a privileged class that has never been created before. We are refusing service to people that we have already voted have the right to do this and it is i think this is a terrible this is the this is the worst recommendation in my opinion that we are making to the city right now this is if there is if there is one individual thing i believe will destroy this potential for this to work at all it's this well, the purpose of this discussion is just to make sure that we're capturing what what happened and what, what what the motion was and what the vote was. I know I wasn't here, so I'm yeah. just I'm so same throwing as, out my opinion. Same as what I said to Alana earlier, that you get a chance to put your, I didn't see it yet, so um, your comments in. Robin? Thank you, Chair. I just really I appreciate your passion so much, Evan. I know how you feel about this. I feel passionately about it as well. If we could please hold the conversation to the way that the record is reflected here. And then if you have another motion or something else to bring later, that would help move this along. Thank you. Um, so that was, where are we now? That was 11, 12. No, is that, was that correct? That was five zero, we had two people out. Two of you still have hands up, by the way. I, normally I can go in and take people's hands down, but not this meeting. I'll take that for you. Is that Caitlin? Thank you, yeah. Caitlin. Thanks. All right. Uh, what would I say? Um, number 13 now. Is anybody double checking these votes? The five zero versus and six zero? We just said that we would, if somebody thought that there was a misvote or something like that, then we would either ask the city to go back through the record and find out, or we could look at the minutes. Um, we didn't, we, we specifically said we didn't necessarily want the city staff to go through every single one unless we thought there was a, an error from the meeting minutes. Yeah, and it probably doesn't matter that much, but it's just the very first motion that was 7-0 was written as 6-0. And again, as I just said, probably doesn't matter that much. It was unanimous. 
I think the language is a little weird. Um, I think just saying a plan for safe transportation of impaired clients might better reflect the motion. Provisions for safe transportation. So striking that provisions plan. Um, yeah, I agree. It's just a clarifying grammatical issue. I agree. I support Alana's edit. Yeah, it's extra verbiage. Maybe it's just for the safe transportation of impaired clients and delete that provisions. Okay, We're good. 14. Yeah, I do want to dig into this one and make sure that we really intended to cut off consumption. I think we intended to cut off sales and potentially allow people to can finish, finish the products that they had at that time. I suspect you're right, actually. I don't, I cannot see the minutes for that month either. If I, if I can jump in, my intention with this particular vote was that um, there would be time for, that it, 10 p.m. was the cutoff for consumption and sales. That's what I understood the most to. My, my focus here was impaired driving and that's what was my motivation in this particular vote. I had the same understanding, and the same intention as member. I understand uh, that the early side was the question that I had when I was reading everybody's notes today. I was wondering why the 10 a.m. I understand the 10 a.m. to 12, well, 12 a.m. businesses close, 10 p.m. last call kind of situation. That makes sense to me. But why the 10 a.m. opening time when we have a state state uh, timing of 7 a.m. What, what's the what's the motivation for the early morning prohibition? We were keeping it consistent with something, but I don't remember. What time do um, um, marijuana stores open? 7 a.m. is when they're allowed. And do bars open? 7 a.m. Evan, is this is the 7 a.m. in the city of Boulder? Or are you saying that that the state allows for that? I thought the maybe the city of yeah, Boulder. The state, the state says you've got to be closed between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. City of Boulder allows marijuana businesses to open as early as 7 a.m. and close as late as 10 p.m. I believe. Sorry, I just want to uh, clarify. It's 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So what time is it? 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. There you go. So 8 a.m. instead of 10 a.m. That would be the that would be the difference there. I just I, I think that if we're talking about businesses, I think Alana made the comment about brunch establishments, where kind of following that same alcohol model. Uh, why why would you not want a brunch establishment that had a smoking area to be allowed to be open during brunch? So I would say. If 8 a.m. is the time that all the rest of the marijuana businesses are allowed to open, perhaps that would be the, if there was, if, if the intent was that it be aligned with other marijuana businesses, 8 a.m. is the right time, not 10 a.m. Kristen, is that correct about alcohol also? Let me check the liquor code real quick, just so I make sure I give you the right information. Trying to look it up. Wouldn't we need a new motion if we do want to change it? Yeah. So, so then just... should we just add it to our list of you know follow-up motions like we were saying earlier, just to kind of keep moving? Yeah, Evan, are you keeping a list? Checking it. I am actually. It's it's a running total at the end of this, but I'm just noticing like the buff is open at 7 a.m. Uh, a lot of the other breakfast joints, the um, place on Pearl, the snooze. Same kind of situation. So, alcohol service at seven a.m. So,
Okay, so put it on the list. Because this is what we voted, I believe. Yeah, I'm, I believe you. I found the minutes language and it says, um, if I may, Chair Kunzman, motion for hospitality establishments to have hours of operations from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., but to stop service at 10 p.m. Motion, member Keegan second, motion passes four to two. Service. The one, and I don't recall us talking about stopping consumption at 10 p.m. I don't, I'm not saying I remember every single thing we've talked about, but do you want to make sure that that's that that was intended to include consumption? Because there's a, clearly an opportunity if they're being served up until 10 to finish their products until midnight. Okay, I'm also just trying to be accurate on what we thought we were voting on, which the only way to do that is to listen to the audio from that meeting. Um, my recollection of that was also that it was it was just for sales when people were discussing it. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I don't remember talking about this, but I feel like if we did mention consumption, something would have been said along the lines of, of you know, that's going to be very difficult for, um, <laughs> for uh, business owners um, to be able to stop, right? Exactly. So if you serve, you can serve until nine, you know, like 9.59. Um, you know, that person just starting a joint, let's say, or something to, to smoke or a beverage or whatever, you know, products we allow. Um, it's just going to be really hard to say you have to serve and finish at the same time. Um, so I, I don't remember us having that conversation, which is why based on the, no, the, the minute saying stop service, I don't, I don't actually think that we talked about it being consumption. I, I, again, intention of the moment in, of the vote matters. Um, so, um, but I just wanted to say that that was my recollection as well. Okay. Well, let a couple of us, some of us will double check the audio, but we're going to get down to a motion 23 that clarifies this if we don't want to try and mess with what's already there. Sure. Because we can't, it's not that easy to listen to the audio, I'll tell you, after doing it last night. Yeah, I think we can run this, run this again and see 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. and stop at 10, stop sales at 10. I think it's impossible to stop sales and consumption. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's like giving everybody last call and making them slam their beer, which is not logical. Okay, number 15. Um, just for a note, I highlighted hospitality establishments because um, I didn't know if the intention of the motion was to include all hospitality or just if I should be putting in the um, marijuana, hospitality, and sales businesses into the next two. So I can easily just switch those, but I didn't want to do it without fully understanding what the intention was. Can we note the consumption in red or put a comment? Say it again. You mean like change it and then highlight it or hold yeah, it? Just note oh, that it's oh, something we need oh, to look Oh, consumption. Into. Okay. All right. Well, why not make it consistent and still highlight it? How's that sound? Sure. So what did I just say? 15? Yeah. Hey, just you want to repeat again, you highlighted something here in red and you're just suggesting you want to change this to be consistent with hospitality and sales businesses? I thought we were moving on to 15. So I, I, I didn't change the, I, I, if we're not done with 14, I don't want to start 15. So. All right, well, let's move on to 15. Kate, can you restate again like why you highlighted hospitality establishments here? 
Yeah, the, I mean, it just said on here, Clab recommends waiting um, to license hospitality establishments until roadside tools. I just, I was moving, like you, y'all had asked me to change everything to marijuana hospitality and sales businesses. And I just wanted to make sure that I should do that for these two because the the, the language was different than the other ones. And I just want to be consistent. So no, I think I, before, that's right. before doing it, I just want to make sure that I'm supposed to do it. Right. I think, yeah, you should okay. do that. Great. Thank you. Any other concerns about 15 then? Sixteen. I think the language of 16 is something rather critical. Um, I remember noting something about this. Yeah, so 16 has a little bit of language that I want to make sure that the motion itself actually lines up with what we're summarizing here. Uh, to ensure uh, responders are safe from health impacts of secondhand smoke. That as a, as a phrase is very, very hard to enforce. Did we specifically say, did you guys specifically say in this one, this was the last meeting before I joined that to keep health, the term safe is just a very difficult thing to enforce. Uh, generally you have a standard here. I mean, I, you'll guys will see in my notes if you read them, but I did make reference to uh, the Colorado, whoa, whoa, what is it? It is the Mechanical Code 2021 for the state of Colorado for smoking rooms. Uh, I will tell you, I, I know what the standard is because this is what it used to be for us inside of our gardens, but it's a 60, 60 CFM per occupant makeup air standard of outdoor air with no prohibition on recirculating anything in excess of that standard. But it is a very specific standard for what you have to do. I will remind, or I'll let everybody know, I promise it's, it is three times the amount of air required for any other type of business that is not an embalming facility or a battery manufacturing plant. The standard is extremely high, but it does exist. And I gave the link in my notes. Uh, so if anybody wants to look at that there, you can check it out. But I think if we're going to make a recommendation, we should make a specific one and safe for I mean, all of your notes note the same thing. There is no safe amount of secondhand smoke. So we should just set a standard and let people understand that our standard is very high. And if you choose to step inside of a smoking area, you are being protected to a certain degree, but you are not 100% safe. There's no way to do that. What about protected using that term you just used? It's fine by me. I just don't know exactly what the that you are protected. I mean, protected to the standard that we've already established for smoking rooms. I mean, I think that it does exist. And I gave you guys the link. So I think we should use it because that's the reference that we need to make. The state does not mandate that. The state says that we are exempt now and we can actually have, like you You don't have to clean the air that much. You, <laughs> we're exempted from the Clean Indoor Air Act. So some municipalities may allow people to have hot box rooms. It's entirely possible. That's not what our intent is. So we should give the standard for filtration. Again, it's in my notes. I don't want to, this is what got voted on, but I think for clarity's sake, this could be something that we revisit and provide a standard, provide the actual have... filtration standard. I've been for, um, oh, I'm sorry, Chair. Oh, well, you go ahead, Robin. Okay, I was just going to uh, clarify, give you, get you up to date on where this particular motion came from. Um, we heard from a wide variety of stakeholders on this issue, and there were several CLAB members who were concerned about workers. Um, several of us agree with you, there is no way to bring forward something that will keep people safe. We're asking council to act, look at that issue, think about it. This doesn't prescribe a certain level. And if you want to bring another motion that does that, I think you can, but that is what the intention of this motion was, is that it is our priority to keep workers safe from the effects of secondhand smoke. 
Um, and that was open to some level of interpretation because there wasn't a, a, a standard where people could agree on what was safe or not safe. And I think your recognition that there really is no safe level of secondhand smoke is a good one, but that was the motion. And I think, you know, if you want to bring something else that sets a standard, let's do that in a minute. Cool. All right, 17. Robin, you still have your hand up. Kristen, does that um, 17, what does that mean to you? As a city staff person. Uh, the way I understand that is um, when we're looking at zoning for hospitality businesses, um, you would use the same, uh, categories in the, the land use like there's a table in the um, land use code that outlines zoning requirements for different types of businesses and it's my understanding is we would use the requirements outlined for um, bars restaurants and taverns when we're looking at zoning for hospitality establishments okay you remember were you, were you here for that were you here in august i was yeah Okay. Was that table shown or discussed? Table I, I do. Six. Yeah. It's... It was a it was a table that was in our packet um, okay. that Kathy and staff had made that was like more um, limited than the entire land use or the okay. <laughs> title nine. Eighteen. Uh, so we should, the same as we took Alana off, if to make it consistent. All right, uh, 19. And that's a standard term for the city, is that? I'm just trying to remember. That's a term of art that we use for liquor licensing. Okay, so if somebody were gonna open a bar or bar and restaurant someplace where there's like in the middle of Martin Acres, which I'm not sure you could even do, but you know, someplace where there is no bar, then there'd be a, what's it called? Needs and desires hearing. Correct. Okay. okay. All right, I made it down to the end of the motions as they were. Do we need to talk about the, let's see, table the zoning conversation until? These next ones that are highlighted, I think are just procedural about whether or not when we send this off to city council. I agree with Robin's comment about, it doesn't really seem like they should be included. I agree also. The next four you mean, or just the first two, or what do you mean? It was three, three, there's but three, yeah. there's, there's three, sorry. Just goes on to another page for me, so. Or can we put them, not call them that and put them at the very bottom or something? I mean, is there any purpose in doing that? I think they would just be struck. Yeah, they're like procedural rather than policy or substantive. Okay. Excellent. 
all that work. Food. Gone. All right. To answer Alana's concern early on, is, and also, I, I was hoping to still finish the things that I had not finished. Um, which means we'd have to vote on this on another meeting. Right. Yeah, if you notice the date on there, I'm recognizing the time right now. We have 45 minutes left, but we're gonna I, I added. I don't know what date in February we're meeting, but perhaps it would be better to bring these bring these to a vote at that point. I know everybody's I'm getting tired, so I would assume everyone is. May not matter at all, but I I don't know that these need to be in this particular document at this point. I don't believe that they do either, Robin. It was okay. if I put them here because in case we were going to vote on them today, I wanted them to be in front of everybody. But if if we are not going to make any moves to vote on these right now, I will remove them and send them around so that they can be included in the packet. Thank you. Yep. Well, you can leave them in there right now, just as. I don't think we're voting on this finished document yet, so it's probably easier just leaving them where they are. Your chair, I, I, I can identify them as very much not <laughs> to be voted on. I don't know. No, there's, no, there's no votes. There's no. It's certainly <laughs> an easy place for everybody to look at the language I would propose for us to vote on next meeting. I would just suggest we make it clear because it is a public document. We don't want to create any con confusion, Chair. That that's was the only reason I. Why don't we um, put a new put a like put a a buffer between motion nineteen and. Oh, I sorry. like what Evan do with proposed motions, but I think this should. How about a? I don't know how to easily put a line. Oh, there. Okay, Evan did it. Never mind. Too fast for me. And you have twenty three and twenty three, and you have them both store store hours. Is that the date for the next meeting? That is the first Monday in February. So at some point in time, maybe this is, that's a really good segue for, it has been, been proposed by at least one person, maybe more, uh, that those that could and wanted to meet in person. But I also don't know the status, Kristen, is there a status for any hybrid meetings at this point in time? Not at this time, no, I, I don't have any updates on that. Hmm. Okay. So it's either, it's all or none. It's like city council is in person, right? But, does, but the public is now coming? You know, I'm, I'm not sure, Tom. I'll have to look into that and get back to you. Because um, initially, what the current policy is. I don't know about now, but the city council would meet and then public could watch virtually. I can try and address your question, Tom. Um, yeah. So, council um, is having study sessions virtually, um, everyone's virtual, and then um, their regular business meetings. Um, are virtual as well as in person. Um, so they've had folks um, attend the meeting as well, I believe. They say, it, say it again? They've had individuals, like the public, at the meetings as well as appear virtually in their yeah. me business meetings. No it's it's kind of been haphazard. It, sort of depends on whether, like if there was a one that was weather related where they just, you know, 
I would think reverted back to just virtual, even though, even though it was a business meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no, no hybrids at this point in time. Well, what do you mean by hybrid? I mean, I think- Or some yeah. people are in person and some people are attending virtually. Yes, I believe that they have had those. Okay. You know, I have to confirm. I, I, I honestly am not sure. Well, we were told some, who knows when, six to 12 months ago or so that when we asked about it, that, that no, that can't be done. Because That's, there was Kate's, some uh, Kate's not here. Done. I'm sorry. Kate's not here, and and uh, and there may be times that somebody might not be able to make it because they're had a positive COVID test or whatever. Y'all should not make a decision based on me. No, I'm sure there's other people that may need to or may be required to because of health status or may uh, want to attend virtually. So unless we hear differently, at least for now, we're virtual, right? Right. All right, so um, those that want to can still go in and change their comments or add comments or whatever. Do you want us to, would you like us to have comments on the proposed motions also, if we have time? I'm 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 all up for the discussion as much as you guys want to do. <laughs> Just my uh, procedural question is: Did we have other things on the agenda for February uh, that this would be? I want to discuss these motions. Uh, maybe not tonight. Maybe partially tonight. Uh, but would this be displacing anything that was planned for our February meeting? We do not have anything special planned for the February meeting. So we were just planning on reviewing the hospitality memo and anything else the board would like to discuss. Okay. My suggestion would be that if we wanted to round out, is it worth going through folks' arguments, pros and cons, not pros and cons, excuse me, but like the arguments for the motions, the sort of the next part of this document. Um, in any kind of way? A straw poll, or what do you mean, Brian? Um, if folks had a chance to review other people's arguments, did they want to get oh. feedback or just use oh, okay. commenting or do that in the future, or use our time now? Or I would suggest, because there's so much there to do that on people's own time, and we're not going to make it through much. I was wondering about a straw poll on some of the proposed motions without making it official. Tom, I think that's a great idea. Take it up privately. Okay. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm also looking at today's agenda and making sure how much time do you need much time, Kristen? For today? Matters from the regulatory licensing office. That's that's the future top or topics for future cloud meetings. Uh, and maybe um, I had an item to raise in that agenda topic if we go there. Okay. Uh, 626. Is everybody okay till seven? I know I, I sometimes like to let people leave at 630, but I'll stay until seven if others can. My Man, more lengthy if that's what you're referring to. What would take us to seven? Oh, uh, like straw polls on the proposed motions? Can I jump in? I, I'm not sure a straw poll is really appropriate. There are some um, proposed motions that would be considered motions for reconsideration on the original motion. 
Mm -hmm. And they have to go through that whole process that I explained earlier about the prevailing member must make that motion and second and all that. So I think it would be a little bit premature to do that. Well, but if there was nothing official about it, that's where a straw poll is very unofficial, right? But you're rolling two actions into one. One action is changing an original motion for reconsideration, and then the second part being approving or finding out, you know, who I, supports and who doesn't. I, I don't know. I'm well, certainly happy to discuss it, but I think the only thing that's actually up for reconsideration is the store hours. I think the rest is just clarifications on previously voted uh, motions. Certainly the store hours is a new motion, but the rest of them, I think, or the store hours is a reconsideration of a motion that was already passed. It's just, I think there was a, a technical mistake in that one, but I think the other four are actually new motions. Kate, you had your hand up. I was just saying maybe we could just make sure we know which ones are reconsiderations versus which ones are going to be new motions so that we do know exactly what we're doing in February. Because we, I, I don't think that we have time other than clarifications of these motions that we could talk about now without getting too far into the weeds on anything. Um, but that's just my opinion. I think that the best thing would be to what's, you know, what's something that we are going to have to have the, the you know, the, um, yeah, for reconsideration versus a brand new motion. And as an exception, I would assume an exception would be a, a separate new motion. Yeah, uh, in my mind, I don't know. That's a that's a legal question. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sandra, do you, like, based on these, other than the hours of operations, do you see any other ones that would be up for reconsideration in, in which we would have to go through the process that you explained earlier? Sandra, can you? Or no? Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, I guess it's getting a little late. Um, I uh, haven't had an opportunity to look at these individually, so I would just request an opportunity to do that. So in, in the next month, as we're considering them, I guess from either Evan or whoever wants to speak, uh, I would have questions only because I just don't know on, on motion 20. Is that, does that look at concentration or intake or? Delivery method. In my mind, what that's specifically referring to is is vaporizer pens. That is not a habitable device, not a torch powered device, not a combustion method, but a. I mean, we can we can get into the specifics of what it actually is, but it's a low voltage vaporization product. So mm -hmm. it's a temperature vaporization somewhere between two hundred and eighty and four hundred and fifty degrees. It is not combustion. I don't know how specific you want me to get on that. I don't, I don't want to get confusing with the language, but from a functional perspective, it's it's we already can't exceed half a gram, so we don't need to clarify that. What we would be saying by do, by passing this motion, in my mind, is that vape pens of half a gram or smaller increment would be approved as an exemption to the prohibition on marijuana concentrate. Okay. What would be helpful, I think, is if um, on these new proposed motions, if you can refer back to the original motion that it's uh, uh, trying to amend or change. Certainly, Thank I can. I, I will add the detail into this into this yeah, document. Just even just the number, you know, motion number yeah. five or whatever it is. Kate, you had your hand up. Just considerations. I mean, uh, they, the state uses the term vaporizer de delivery device um, in theirs. I, I do think there, if, if this is a hospitality and sales establishment, I don't know how that, I mean, 
would that then be disposable vape pens that you're talking about or could it be are you going to assess it like, could be it could be it could be either in my opinion i mean you could I sell the pen take, and the cartridge yeah i think the disposable vape pens should be banned from the earth but i yeah <laughs> yeah they're they're the worst of the worst but I think they're worth considering. I think the, the city council is not going to have a choice but to consider them. I think they should be outright yeah. banned. I'd be happy to make a motion to say single-use disposable vaporizers are explicitly forbidden. But that's a. I would not make friends in my industry by doing that. They are the highest profitability product in the market, but they are awful. So I'd be happy to exempt them and say those are prohibited, but reusable vape devices. <laughs> are allowed. I, I think that's a little, it's a little granular for what we're trying to do here, but I, I think by this would exempt those disposable vapes by, by the language that's here right now. So for the um, novice in the crowd, what's in a nutshell, what's awful about them? They are single use batteries. So generally they're smaller increment 0.5 or 0.25 or 0.3 gram, as opposed to a half a gram. And they are a battery attached to a chamber that cannot be separated. So um, your typical vape device is either a 510 thread or a proprietary attachment that allows you to have a battery that can be recharged attached to a cartridge that is single use. So the small piece of plastic with a tiny little piece of metal on it that you smoke a half a gram from or that you vaporize a half a gram from goes in the garbage and you replace that, but you don't have to replace the battery every time. Single use uh, disposables are battery and cartridge all in one. And basically you can consume it in 30 minutes and then have something about the size of a double A battery to throw away. So. I can tell you after trying to start a recycling program for them a couple of years ago, they are, they're the most environmentally damaging thing the industry does. Okay. So aside from that, <laughs> that's my, that's my take on it. <laughs> aside from that whole discussion, uh, is, does it, would this address relative concentration or relative intake, relative uh, exposure? No, you're still allowed to have, I mean, if, if we're, if we're exempting it, it would still fall under 500 milligram or 500 milligram by mass, half a gram increment limitation that the state already has in place. So, okay, so I'm obviously, and I'm, I'm just going to admit my naivete, but when we did a tour of your facility, Alana, and we saw them making concentrates, and, and I don't know if it was you that said it or someone said that the concentrate can be you know, greater than 60% concentrated or 70 or whatever, um, you could fill in the blank of whatever number. Uh, would this be included? This doesn't address potency. So a half gram is 500 milligrams, right? So if it's 60% THC, 60% of that 500 milligrams is the amount of THC. If we're talking technicalities here, um, the absolute purest form of THCA that you could have would become fully decarboxylated. So a half a gram cartridge at most is only allowed to be, is only chemically capable of being 87.5% bioavailable THC. So 500 milligrams, it's, it's better to think about it. I, when I try to explain this to people, it's a half a gram of weight but it's about somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of a gram worth of THC. Was there any new laws within the past year that affected this? Only in medical. So in medical sales quantities, Maybe Robin, you can speak to this a little bit more. I'm not familiar with what may have passed in the last year or so, but is there anything regulating potency caps at this point? There's nothing regulating potency caps at this point. Yeah. So I mean, you can have pure distillate and that's as close to pure as you can get. And that's at most, I don't know, 87 and a half percent. So. 
I think the important thing to do here is to really look at the state definition of regulated medical, I mean, excuse me, regulated marijuana concentrates so that the whole board has the um, benefit of really understanding what it was we excluded in that original motion. Um, this uh, proposal sort of works around and brings regulated marijuana concentrate into the hospitality space. Um, and I think I wanna make sure that everybody on the board understands that that's what they're voting to do if they, if they support that motion. Um, the original intent of leaving regulated marijuana concentrate out of hospitality establishments was a go slow idea and mitigation for impossible impaired driving problems. Um, I know we go back to this uh, comparison to alcohol, but this is not alcohol. It's, it's just regulated marijuana concentrate. It's something different. And as Dr. Green pointed out, there are very serious concerns um, with this and people come at it from a lot of different angles and experiences. So I, I look forward to the debate later if that's what we're going to do, unless we're going to keep talking about it now. Chair. No, because I was actually going to ask a question next about number 21. I'm all ears. Is this allowed by the hospitality law that was created or that was voted on in 2020? Yes. Yeah. So this is, think, uh, the, the potential for this situation, we exempted it from the city, but the, the other form of hospitality license would be the best way to think about this. Uh, it was a mobile hospitality license where you basically would corral people outside and allow them to smoke outside of a bus or on a bus. Uh, that is the that is the other hospitality license category. I think uh, it would be approved. It can be approved uh, if we create some exemptions. And being outside makes it very difficult to prevent the smell from reaching the public, but it does prevent it is very possible to prevent the visibility of this. Now, as I wrote this, I kind of considered several different layers where where this line should get drawn. I think there are, there is a special case where it's appropriate to have a hospitality license that has an outdoor smoking area. It isn't necessarily appropriate that every business that is allowed to have it indoor could appropriately have it outdoor as well. Um, uh, take, for example, oh, let's think about this, uh, the outdoor patio at the chop house on Walnut. That space could very well be blocked off from uh, visibility from outside, but it's going to directly impact the access to many of the adjacent businesses. The alternative to that would be a place like the Rio, where they could put a place on the roof uh, a space on the roof for outdoor consumption and wall it off so that it wouldn't be visible. And simultaneously, the smoke would not be directly affecting public access to buildings. This is very complicated, but I think it's worthwhile to bring up because we are, we are saying smoking flour is okay, but then we're contemplating how difficult it is to clean the air to make it safe. So I think it's worthwhile for us to consider under special circumstances, allowing outdoor consumption because I think nobody argues that it's by, and by a mile much safer to consume in an outdoor setting for the secondhand smoke situation for people around you. So I think it's worth considering that perhaps we, we allow outdoor so long as it is not visible under the same expectation that it be far enough away from public access to buildings to not impair people walk or to not affect or be available to people walking into a door. We do it with tobacco, so we certainly do it with marijuana as well, so. Is there a, a, a motion, a current motion that that parallels with, or is this a, would this be- a No, motion? that one's that one's completely new because right now we've only contemplated indoor consumption. So okay. I think- I just wanted to make sure, because that's what I thought, is, but I wanted to make sure that that was the case. So uh, a corollary question to that, uh, which I'm not sure who Kristen might be able to be the best person to answer this. There was some discussion in, in times past, um, and it's not really our purview or 
our mission or it would be mission creep because it would be zoning. But there was some discussion that um, hospitality establishments would not be able to be on the first floor um, around places like Pearl Street Mall. Am I remembering right? Uh, I know that that was a discussion point, but I'm not sure that we actually made any. No, I don't know. If they, I don't think there was so, any motions. So, Tom, the what this would relate to is the zoning restrictions. So there was a conversation about whether or not we were allowed to make any recommendations about zoning modification. So right now, the marijuana businesses are all under regulated zones that we're allowed to be in. The brewery, tavern, restaurant uh, vote that we made would impact zoning. That's why some of those procedural <laughs> votes were in there. So uh, we're not, I, I don't, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I don't think we actually did exclude them from the first floor on Pearl Street, or did we? Is, is what's her name, Stella's allowed to be on the first floor? I know she, that's not a hospitality business, but the theory was that it was going to be. Is that on the first floor? Well, having been there, Brian and I, we can attest to the fact that it is on the first floor, yes. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that the goal just... was... Go ahead, Brian. Right. Right, and when we went to the meeting, they, they said they wanted to apply for a variance uh, for that. So but again, that's far outside of our scope for our meeting tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think what that that question came up in the zoning conversation because if we treat them as bars, taverns, and brew pubs or whatever, they are allowed on the first floor. But marijuana retail is not allowed on the first floor of Pearl Street. So, okay, so uh, Kate, you kind of commented on, I mean, so going on to twenty-two here, sublingual and twenty-three, or no, just twenty-two, uh, that there are some inhalers and maybe some nasal products in the works. Or that they wouldn't qualify as sublingual. They're called they're know, audited, in, the, in the code. They're called that. audited products. I know that. Um, so, so, will there need to be another proposed motion to address other ones, other modes? I mean, those? if there's an interest for people to add those, then you could put a motion together for that. I don't know that that's. Okay. Yeah. Kate, you use the term audited products, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't think we need to get into that <laughs> as much as it is an important consideration. It hasn't made much traction in the industry yet. Uh, there's a couple different categories of audited products. They require special testing. They require special delivery mechanism certifications. And they are generally- if there were other products, so that's all I was yeah. trying to. Well, yeah, there's a, like a, there's a special category at the MED level that says these are the these are the special types of products, and inhalers is one of them. Dry inhalers is one of them. Is sublingual under that too? I don't know. To be no, completely honest, it is not. It is not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just... So sublinguals are they're under edibles, but they're not generally. I don't know exactly how the state defines sublingual, but it's like dissolves under the tongue, not meant to be consumed through the digestive tract. There's tinctures are like that. There's uh, like uh, does tongue dissolves like a uh, like breath strip kind of material. And then there's also like sugar pill material that can be used for very, very low dose, like one and two milligram small dosing. So okay. not huge, but they should be allowed because they are really small and really fast. All right, 23 is pretty straightforward. We'll discuss that next time. 24, anybody have any concerns, any questions? So can we go back? Well, 23 is straightforward, I'm sorry. But for 22, is, is that a motion to amend number three, or is this a new motion since we're talking about well, the different items? I don't, I don't know how we would want to classify this. We Because we specified a couple different categories up at the top. So this would be a new one. Sublinguals would kind of, in my mind, be in addition to marijuana edibles, in addition to marijuana topicals, and in addition to marijuana beverages. Um, is it so they're all considered weird. infused products. This gets weird. It's really a different thing. I mean, it's, you know, Stacy can comment about this also, but, you know, Nitroglycerin, that was a way to get 
nitro into somebody's body really quickly uh, when they needed it because they're having angina or a heart attack. I think since we already split vet beverages out of marijuana edibles and it's considered a liquid, I think that there is um, uh, an argument to be made that it would be considered a separate motion, in my opinion. Okay, I agree. So I'm looking at 21, 22, and 23 being my motions. Does anyone disagree with that? I think 23 is a reconsideration because it's just changing the hours that we already voted on. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I. You mean 2021 20, 20, and 22? Yeah. Um, I've got 21 and 22 then. Just and 21 and 22 would be new. Yeah. Because 24 would be um, referring to the ventilation conversation that says safe, right? Which is number 16. Yeah. That's an amendment. Yeah. So, well, so that's, I see that as a reconsideration of number 16. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There are 25. There's no 25. What? That's for you to add, Tom. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sorry, uh, can we go back to 23? Because 23 is actually a reconsideration of the store hours. Yeah. yeah. He, he, okay. he typed that in there. Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw that. Sorry about that. I guess. And 20 is a reconsideration? Yeah, it would be an exception to five, which is the concentrates. In that reference, we can look at that reference on 24. Yeah, so that uh, that reference on 24 will take you to the 20 Colorado uh, Colorado or Colorado Mechanical Code. Uh, the table is table 403311. It's maybe a third of the way scrolling down that page when you can come to that link. Uh, yeah, that that table basically goes through all the usages and the what is the what is the occupancy classification, and then based on that occupancy classification, what is the mandatory uh, outdoor airflow? So that's the critical. It's the second column in the the second, well, really third column in the table if you're opening it up, and yeah. specifically refers to the amount of outdoor air that needs to be supplied per person who is occupying the space. So we have we have occupancy standards per thousand square feet for every facility and building in the city. Based on that occupancy standard for the size of the room, what is the CFM mandated to bring in fresh air from outside? What this code, if you look deeply into it, what it actually says is that you have a minimum of 60 cubic feet per minute per person coming into the room. Anything in excess of that can be recirculated. So what that gets at, and it's very, it's very important for this because generally if you just apply this base standard of 60 CFM, it means 60 CFM in, 60 CFM out, and filtering that air on the way out is extremely, extremely expensive. Imagine what happens when you're inside of a space like this that has five degree, 10 degree air coming in the week before Christmas and you have 60 CFM per occupant that you have to heat and or cool in the, in the summer. What you need to do and what we, what we learned when we were first building the original gardens in Boulder was that you need to have makeup air and then you need to have fresh air. And when you can recirculate that makeup air, you can temper the temperature of the room and you can filter the particulates that are in the room. So this standard is very specific. It is a very good standard. It is also an extremely difficult to meet standard. It's very expensive, but it already exists. And it is the number one way to limit the liability associated with allowing people to smoke inside. So. I'm an advocate for this high standard because I believe that it is necessary to 
CYA for the industry further on down the line. If we if we apply this standard and don't let people breathe in secondhand smoke, we will be a leader where we are not obligated to be. The state does not mandate this, but I think we should. Okay, before we go even any further, Alana, did you still have a, I'm sorry, there's eight minutes. It's okay, it's for the next agenda item, we can wait. Okay, well, I think we, let's move on to the last agenda item, unless anyone's opposed to doing that. No, I appreciate you for providing that information and research out and I'll look into it and check with my sources. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> it's really expensive. This is one thing I will tell I you. you. This is it going to be prohibitive like for a lot of businesses, but if we do it, then we're, we're protected. Okay, great. Well, um, it's Kristen's item, I'll let her. Go ahead, Kristen, you got the floor. Thank you. Um, I don't really have a lot for this agenda item, but if anyone has any suggestions for future topics for um, CLAB meetings, I'd love to hear them. I just thought maybe, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. I was just making my, my, my um, turn. I've notes. heard people mention from our retreat so I think before the retreat and in today's meeting about speakers and education, and I wanted to bring that topic up again. Robin raised it around CHS. I raised it around concentrates. I think those are really, really good topics that the board should receive education on. Um, Stacy raised the research from CU. I don't know if there's any updates that Cinnamon Bidwell and Kent have on the research, but I was gonna throw out the idea of using a couple meetings out, maybe like April for at some educational opportunities for the board. And I thought um, I'd like to advocate for just some basic 101 concentrate education from one of our local licensees. My team would be happy to present on that, um, but I just don't, recall that we've really received it. I know I was really tepid to offer it at the beginning because I was chair. Um, just wanted to things, things to unfold. Um, but now years in, I think it's holding us back because I noticed that there's, you know, a, just a, a gap of knowledge and language and our awareness and understanding around concentrates. And so definitely wanted to advocate for some concentrate education. I thought maybe April would be a good time because we'll be through hospitality. Um, but I also thought maybe we could do like an educational, you know, a couple other topics that people think are important. That was my uh, contribution for this item. Thanks, Alana. I did add that to our list. Okay. Uh, Kate? Yeah, I was going to say um, to also add potentially for discussion topics, um, social equity. We had talked about it briefly at one point, but we haven't really come back to that. And I'm just curious how the board felt about that. Um, so maybe add that to the future topics list. And then I was going to ask if people were okay with removing the hospitality resource document from the packet since it's, it takes up a lot of space and we don't really do use it anymore. Sure. We, can all, we all know where to find it. In thank every other packet for the past two and, years. And, uh, thank you for doing that. It was you and who, wasn't there a, a fellow? A Ashley and I help um, work That's on what that. I thought, yeah, okay. Thank you, Ashley, also. Oh, she's not here. Uh, Robin? Uh, concentrate social equity. Um, my interest in bringing CHS is forward and I talked to Evan a little bit about this offline is I think there's a huge opportunity for community um, education and preventing an enormous amount of suffering and expense in people who are unaware. Um, so I really do hope for that opportunity. And my question would be, are we trying to finish our recommendations to city council on hospitality by the March meeting, and then we can do some of this planning. I think Alana mentioned April. Um, I think that's, you know, would be a good goal in terms of timing to try to get get this work complete. It's been a big slog and, yeah. um, and get it off to council so we can move on to some of these other 
really important and exciting topics. Caitlin, what's the um, deadline for submission for reading packet? I'll defer to Kristen on what we think, because I think we had original deadlines and those since passed. So I think the new deadlines would be up to you guys. Sorry, Kristen. I'm sorry, I missed that. Is the question, when is the deadline to include materials yeah. in the reading packet? Um, yeah. And we're talking about the February meeting, correct? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the question was deadlines for when we would want to send hospitality to city council. No, just for deadlines for the being in the reading packet for the February meeting. I can't answer that one. So that meeting will be on February 6th. So the deadline for reading packet will be um, January 23rd. Okay, so you have 14 days. So can everybody try to add their comments as best possible? Robin, your hand is still up. Tom, are you thinking wrap up our hospitality motion comments January by January 23rd? Yeah. yeah. Now that doesn't mean we'll get to all the. I mean, the proposed motion will follow after. Okay. Um. Anybody else have anything else, Brian? Any articles? Okay. Um, any reason not to adjourn? Two minutes, one minute early. <laughs> I mean, I would love the clarification. So the City of Boulder website says that Tom's tenure or term was 2020 to 2022. But then it also says that his seat is up. So does he need to reapply or not? I know it's not my question to ask, but I'm curious about the board makeup. I had a question offline with Andrew or Kristen, I can't remember, uh, that we would discuss it offline. Mm -hmm. I think that's a question that needs to be brought back and uh, addressed by um, staff. And I don't know the answer to that right at the top, off the top of my head. So. Okay. But you're in the same shoes, right? Well, yeah. So my term is 2020 to 2023, but it it says your term is 2020 to 2022. So that would have been, mm. you know, meant that you reapplied last year, which you didn't. So is it supposed to say 2023 on the website and the website's wrong? Kristen, um, can you follow up with John Morris on this? And yeah, and I, absolutely. And I, and I do believe that there is a typo on the website because um, the report that John Morris provided to us about the terms of um, board members states that both Alana and Tom's um, terms expire on March 31st, 2023. So I think it's just a typo on the website. Um, it, does that answer your question? Yeah, um, and I, the, the deadline is just approaching. So just wanted to kind of bring attention to that. There's a deadline right there also? for application or no? It's the end of the month. Of this month? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Brian, motions to adjourn. Any second on that? Even seconds. Any opposition or abstention from that? All right, well, happy new year. Uh, someday we'll meet in person maybe, or something, <laughs> whatever, we'll figure out something. Maybe we'll have another retreat, unofficial. Happy New Year, good night. Thank right. you. Happy, happy New Year, good night. Bye.